Hey, what's up, bookworms? We are back for another Talk About Nothing. Today, we are joined by the sons of John, Edward, and Will Gwynn. Guys, how are you doing? How are things across the pond? Very well, thank you. And, you know, thanks, Mike, so much for having us on the channel. We're really excited today. Yeah, yeah I can't wait. So just in case people don't know, so I'm Will, and this is Ed. Yeah, I'm going to let them, like, because, you know, it's like my kids. I get their names mixed up. So if I get their names mixed up, don't don't get mad at me. It's just, it's just an accident. Because I, I rarely see them, like, apart. You guys are like the dynamic duo. You guys are like the twins that are always in the same room together at the same time. Yeah. I'm glad you guys don't start, like, dressing alike or anything like that, though. That, that would be <laughs> more confusing. I mean, uh, everyone gets their names mixed up. I mean, mum calls us the dog's name sometimes. Yeah, so, I'm uh, sick of being called Potter. Right. Yeah. You know, I gave my mom crap for years for calling me my brother. Tommy, I mean, Michael, all the time, but I do it. Like, <laughs> I call him the dog's name and stuff, too. So, yeah, it, it's, it's a natural part of life. But, yeah, guys, awesome. this is a really, really awesome that you guys would take the time to join me here. Usually, I do a talk about nothing, and, you know, it's one-on-one, but you guys are like you like, guys are like a package deal, and I admire that as a, as a, as a father of two young boys i watch you guys channel i say i hope my kids can be that close one day and also read because my kids don't seem to read very much but i guess mm. maybe if i was an author that might be a little easier of a sell yeah i don't know is, 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 that, is that what you guys think that you became like big readers just because you're dead or just well, well it was well, I like did. read I, or get out really wasn't but, it? Uh, with yeah. me i was a bit i was more of a math person and then uh he, he got his book deal and then i just suddenly became just reading every day all day but um, Ed, you actually went quite a few years without reading, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I've only ever read, I mean, when I was a teenager, I only really read dad's books. And I was like, that's enough for me. You know, I love them. That's all I really need. Was that and, before um, he was published or after? Uh, before. So, you know, I'd read the early drafts. I've actually got one of the early drafts in, in my desk right now, which is, I, I read that sometimes. That's quite fun. But, hey, um, you know, if you got an early draft of, uh, of Bloodsworn 3, you know, you guys know my email address. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all I'm saying so. We'll keep you in mind, you yeah. know. So when you guys... Yeah. When you guys decided to start a, a, a YouTube channel, like what really kind of inspired you to do to, because it takes a lot because I know there's a lot of people out there who love to read, but it takes a lot to put yeah. your face in front of a camera and talk to it for a mm. while. So what made you guys decide to take that plunge? Well, um, we actually uh, watched your review of uh, The Faith and the Fallen and we were like, this book shoot thing looks awesome. Yeah. And then we saw some people doing like a group thing talking about The Faith and the Fallen. We thought this is something we'd, re we'd really love to talk to other people about books that we love, like dad's books and everything else as well. Um, but then it was Ed who actually convinced me. I was like, oh, I've got exams. Uh, it was hard months. work. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I've got exams six months. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time. And Ed just kind of ground me down slowly. And uh, yeah. So I'm very happy he did. I gave no, it. I'm glad you guys did too. I, I, first, the first thing I noticed, like you guys, the play on the Brothers Grimm, I think that's just genius. Yeah. That's, I mean, I work some <laughs> marketing. So I, I know all these kind of things that really are eye grabbers. And as a reader, that was something I was like, that's a great, great name. Much better than Mike's book reviews. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> people ask me all the time, would you change anything? I was like, probably the name, but you know, it's too late now. You, you can't let go of, of, of brand recognition. But uh, one thing you guys do on your channel that I would like to get more into is historical fiction. You guys talk about historical fiction a lot. And I just yeah. read a uh, Bernard Cornwell for the first time with Warlord Chronicles. So I'm definitely more interested when I talked to your dad, that was one that he really did, uh, say that I should probably make a priority was Warlord Chronicles over Saxon stories, which I'm glad because, you know, I was like, Do I really want to start another 13 book series. You know? <laughs> but now that I've read that, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing some Grail quests. I'm definitely going to be doing some Saxon stories and stuff. So yeah. you guys tend to lean more towards the historical fiction side of things. I think, um, I mean, because the way dad writes is it's always seeping in history. You know, the first thing he'll start with is kind of the historical inspiration. So uh, that got us interested in, in, in history from a very young age yeah. and, you know, things like, uh, total war we'd play on computer and you know we just loved all that kind of stuff so um yeah and then and then dad showed me you know bernard cornwell like you mike and i was like i've, I've got to read this you yeah know, and i absolutely loved it so yeah, yeah i think we're pretty evenly split across the board aren't we we're, mm. we're mood readers so we have phases um i'd say fantasy is still our main genre but um probably in the last year or so historical fiction is uh creeping ahead of it yeah, yeah. So you guys are kind of branching out all over the place now. I mean, I've even seen you guys reading Empire of the Vampire, and I was right. You loved it, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. It's, definitely. It's so, it's so iconic. I, I, I just don't know why people won't give Jay Kristoff more of a chance. I think he's just kind of got this stigma of like he's a, mm. a YA author or something like. Guys, yeah. if you read his books, he's the furthest thing from young adult. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to tell you here, but but I'm glad you guys it, not only gave it a shot, but that you really liked it. So Empire. Yeah. Of the Empire yeah, what a book that was, right? Not, was for, not for kids. He's the only person, I think, to give Joe Abercrombie yeah. a run for his money. When, but, you know, his, yeah. his swear words is just yeah. hilarious. Yeah, his combinations and stuff are just hilarious. Well, like, yeah, yeah, stuff I've never even heard of before. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, I've got to start using these. They're, they're just so funny. 
Uh, and he, he's such a visceral writer. And yeah. Every scene was, it was like, he was just so confident. And it was, yeah, like I said, iconic. Yeah, that, that's, that's one of the main things I felt with him. He felt like such a confident writer, didn't he? I mean, every scene, it was just like, he knew what he was doing with it. And it just did feel so atmospheric. And it, it's, just, it's the tome of a book, isn't it? But yeah. I just flew through it. Yeah, and he'll make you blush a little bit with some of his uh, romantic <laughs> scenes as well, huh? So, yeah. <laughs> said I was reading, uh, I was reading uh, what his Nevernight books at work, and I was, I'm reading them like, like looking around. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm reading right now? You know, so yeah, but he's a he's a, he's a great great writer, and I'm uh, even yeah, better yeah, than that. I mean, after I talked, we talked for like what two hours on camera and like an hour mm. off. He was just such a yeah. cool guy. So yeah. yes, that's someone I'll probably read just about anything he puts out going mm. forward, but. Uh, which is going to be Empire of the Vampire 2 next year, which I can't yes. wait for. So, um, he yeah, recently uh, yeah. said that he finished the first draft, didn't he? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, here's a question for you. Someone wants to know if you've ever read Will of Time or Dune. So we've both read Dune mm -hmm. and uh, Will of Time. I read the first three installments when I think I was 12 or 13. And then uh, the first time I kind of got the hang of it, and then the third one I think went a bit over my head. So uh, I've never carried on with it, but it's something I definitely need to kind of dive into again. Yeah, something you'll learn about book two, but you're going to get asked about Wheel of Time quite a bit. It's very, very yeah, it does, it does crop up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wheel of Time and Sanderson crops up the most, probably. Very, very much. I, I used to make that joke like I could do the most in depth, like Tolkien review ever, and a thousand people will watch it. I could talk about like the hat that a character wears in Wheel of Time, it'll get 10,000 views. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. I think it's just it's just a sweet spot of the a, people who kind of grew up that most, most of booktubers, more you guys age than mine. So uh, they they kind of grew up with Will of Time, so it's, it's yeah. still very very popular. But you guys know my affection for Dune. You got yeah. any got any feedback on that? I, I mean, I I really enjoyed Dune. I, I wasn't in love with it, but I mean, it it really did feel like Lord of the Rings, but you know, on a different planet. Mm -hmm. um, to me when I read it, and you know, all all those tropes. <laughs> uh, it, it is you know people kind of give the word trope a hard time, don't they? But this is oh, you know sure. this is where it came from. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, these kind of original classic books. And, you know, I mean, yeah, I watched the film and really we weren't too keen on the film, were we? Not as um, much as the book. No. But, yeah, I, I definitely preferred the book. But, yeah, with Juno, I think it just kind of blew me away that everything that is put into a small chunk, um, it, it really is it, it's an amazing craft, I think. that uh, It's one that you really, you get a few books where I, I love a lot of books, but there's a few that you really just respect when you're reading it as well. Mm. And, yeah, Dune is one of them. Yeah, yeah, I never give anybody a hard time if they say they didn't like it as much. But look, I don't expect people to like it as much as me, obviously. I, I because I do like uh, why you should read yourself. It's usually stuff I know is a people pleaser, something I think if you give it a chance, you're probably going yeah. to like it. But with that, it was like this is kind of like more why it's important to me than why you should read it or whatever. But I knew that a lot of people were going to be interested after the movie yeah. came out of mm -hmm. finally doing it. But it's 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 kind of book that people either they're like whatever on or they're just like this changed my life and i always yeah. call the ladder or whatever but it took me three tries before i got to that point yeah but, i remember yeah. you saying yeah yeah i think it's one that i think it's important for everyone to try if they want to see kind of the how much the sci-fi genre has changed and how much it's inspired by dune or just like as an art on itself i think it's something that everyone should give a shot at least once yeah and i mean think i, I would probably enjoy it more on a reread as well because mm. the, you know there's layers upon layers in that book and the yeah, most great book, book of all time for me. Thirteenth time I did right before the movie came. Wow, out. wow, that is <laughs> impressive. Would do again. So someone here is talking, mentioning that you guys got to read Gates of Fire. Yeah, uh, who is that by? Stephen Pressfield. He is uh, a fantastic writer, and Gates of Fire is about the Battle of Thermopylae. So three hundred, um, yeah, three hundred. If you've seen Frank Miller's comic or the film, um, <laughs> but yeah, Gates of Fire is fantastic i think it, it captures that kind of it's kind of a modern soldier's feeling really isn't it yeah um i think it's actually required reading in is it the, 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 the marines the, the marines yeah the marines book. yeah 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 oh, okay all right so um yeah we love it it's kind of uh, we recommended it to people who love fantasy because it, it's got that epic factor that it feels like it could be a fantasy book mm. um and a lot of the action is just it's written so well but it's got the kind of the, the brutal reality at the same time and it's a standalone, and we love a good standalone, don't we? But yeah, we don't we need, need as you said earlier. Oh, it's like the time. unicorn with fantasy. It's like you get a standalone. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay, are you sure? You know, but uh, with historical fiction, I found is like it can kind of be a time suck because when I was reading Warlord Chronicles, I'm real big into the Arthurian legend. Mm. So I always kind of did stuff, but it's putting it more in like a historical records kind of way. Yeah, I found myself. Okay, well, let me go research that. <laughs> you know, yeah, and yeah. so so it probably took me a little longer to read that than it would have because those were just—I mean, you could just fly through that series. It's so good. Mm, yeah. 
Oh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, I kept like looking up these castles and stuff. Like, was this base? Okay, this is actually this and things like that. So, yeah, that's that's something I can see being a, a problem with me with historical fiction. Being like, okay, mm -hmm. well, let me like research the actual history of that, and then I've yeah, been, okay, now I got to read that book too. You know? So, yeah, I find yeah. them dangerous to be honest because I mean, I will read something you know said in the Viking age, and then I will want to you know I will want the clothes and the weapons and because I do read it. Quite that book, so, um, Yeah, exactly. I'm very impressionable. So if I read a book, you know, the book Gates of Fire. Then I, I'm, I'm going to try and buy, buy some bronze armor or something, which is yeah, very expensive. I just can't, I can't hack it really. But you know, someone's got to do it. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Um, you kind of get it, those different like um, categories of historical fiction. Those that the author just throws you in the deep end, thinking the reader will know of this, and they use a lot of crazy terms. And then uh, you get some that they're they're a lot easier, nicer to the uh, to the reader. And I think Gates of Fire is one of them where the terms that it does use it explains early on in a in a very good and subtle way. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one who wants to go buy like ancient weapons and stuff after <laughs> after I read books. I mean, of course, I see like you, Dad. You said he cut his birthday cake with a sayax, but I'm like, because of course he did. <laughs> because of course he did. I, I used to joke uh, to these guys uh, way way long ago that I bet their dad like actually would like cut the Thanksgiving turkey with an actual axe or something like that. And they told me that he cut his birthday cake and one. I'm like, yeah, of course. So I was right about that. <laughs> I think that's just so admirable. I hope I can be that awesome of a father with my kids, you know, but I will read books and be like, okay, for example, this person's asking about red rising. I don't know if you guys ever read that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, the character in there, Darrow, ha you know, has a, has a scythe and I'm like, I gotta go buy one of these, you know? So it's just uh, something I've always done, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. two new red rising books. Um, uh, potentially next year i'm very very excited yeah. obviously uh i met him at a signing right when i first started this channel one of my earliest videos was me actually at that signing yeah and we were just such an awesome awesome guy and that's just such an underrated series i feel like not enough people are giving mm. a shot so i'm hoping this will generate yeah. some new interest so mm. uh, as far as the question how excited am i for two new books i mean two are always going to be better with one <laughs> yeah like red rising so i just hope he doesn't wait make us wait too much longer for that number seven that, that, that yeah movie. and then yeah. the titles are awesome lightbringer and then with the red god red god i was like oh yeah. my god it's amazing yeah that book makes me want to go like learn latin yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah all the oh they i love all those illusions so kind of the greek and like roman kind of classical period uh, i mean that's another series isn't it that's been kind of painted with the wrong brush of being ya when um I think Red Rising kind of fits into that Hunger Games kind of battle royale. When it starts, mood. yeah. But yeah. then it's a very dark version. And then yeah, it's a lot of people are like, oh, I tried to do it. It just felt like too YA to me. I was like, keep going because the sequel oh, books, I'm, I'm still convinced they were ghost written by Joe Abercrombie. I, I, <laughs> they're just I mean, so, so dark. Golden Sun just really blew me away. I mean, yeah. in a good way. I was just astounded by how good it was. And uh, yeah, I, we've left the. We've both only read the first three installments, mm. and we were going to wait for news of what's happening with the next books, and then so we'll be diving in very soon. Again, they get, they get so grim dark. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like, I mean, four and five, I was just like, "Good Lord, Pierce, who hurt you?" I mean, it's just like it's <laughs> so dark. I mean, it's very. I was where I said I felt like it was like the sci-fi equivalent of a song, of, not song of Vice, but uh, but First Law. I really yeah. did because yeah. it was just it just really made me have that similar feeling. So it, your yeah. question here are the characters. In Red Rising, morally gray, they're very <laughs> dark gray. Let's put it that way. They're dark yeah, gray. Yeah, I, mean, I do think there is redeeming qualities about some of them, but yeah, it's kind of in that song of Ice and Fire Away, and that yeah, well, they're all kind of doing bad things. They yeah. really, really are. So, but yeah, it's, I think it's a great one way, as you said, like a lot of them have they have one or two redeemable qualities, but you're still rooting for them, even though they do a lot of terrible things. I mean, personal favorite of mine is Severo. It's just awesome. Yeah, he's a fan favorite, isn't he? Yeah, he's so yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Severo and Victra, those are like that's just like my, my mm. well, yeah. I won't say any spoilers. I'll just say those I love those characters. Yeah, hey yeah. Philip, this is my favorite gray character right here. Philip, because he's <laughs> definitely morally gray, right? This is the nicest guy on the planet, y'all. He's traveling right now, but he just wanted to say hello. So hey right, Philip. Yeah, oh, that was good. That, that was good in like the Weezy's in. <laughs> yeah. You guys are playing into that twin trope I was joking about. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We never we'll, plan it. We'll have to practice that. But yeah, uh, Philip, we love Philip. We were saying um, just before we started that um, the only channel we've been on is Philip's, and now uh, very lucky to be on your channel as well. So yeah, and we've had, we've had a good chat, haven't we, about the first law with with you, Mike, and Philip? Yeah, as well, and that's great. Uh, no, we, we, we can do that a lot. We can do that anytime. That's that's oh, never yeah, a problem. That's one of those things like it's just talking about like sports with me i can do that anytime. Anytime, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I can talk about first law, yeah. especially since we aren't getting any new first law for. For, for quite some time. Sebastian, yeah, real exactly. quick, I say uh, if you want something that's done, Nevernight, because uh, Empire of the Vampire is about as long as the Nevernight trilogy on its own. 
but you'll fly through it. So there's yeah. not really a wrong answer there. Mm. Well, I mean, uh, you've got never no, <laughs> somewhere on the shelves behind. I that, do. Yeah, I can, I, I've seen people just they they do moan a bit about footnotes, don't they? But um, but we'll see. Which I don't get. You don't got to read them, guys. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Even the homework assignment. You I'm know? Keeping, so. like I must read every word. <laughs> Here's another opinion, Mike. People tend to skip prologues sometimes, I've heard lately. Do you ever skip? I a won't skip a prologue, but I won't lie. When I was reading Malazan, I was skipping the hell out of the poems. I just like, they, just, <laughs> they don't make very much sense to me. Mm. So Good job, Philip's traveling. Otherwise, I think he'd be quite upset. <laughs> yeah, Philip, I will only say that when Philip's not on here to tell me why I'm wrong at these things right now. So, <laughs> so uh, oh, yeah. Moonbot oh, says, uh, Truth and Courage. Thank you very much, Moonbot. So, uh, truth yeah. And courage. I, I, it, Truth and courage is just like such an addicting phrase. You guys should be selling T-shirts. I'm telling you. I yeah, know. Well, we didn't think of that. I, actually, I, I mean, someone um quite a few years ago they made some T-shirts with their craft, didn't they? Saying ruin, yeah. which was awesome. We've got yeah. a few of them. But yeah, we probably need some uh, T-shirts saying truth and courage on. I'm I'm reading Malice again at the moment, and um yeah, big truth and courage mode. It must be really cool to be like just to have that option to be like. Hey, what were you thinking when you wrote this part when that guy's in the next room? It's got to be kind of neat, huh? Yeah. It's so funny because William, <laughs> I mean, William's favorite book is The Silmarillion, I think we could say, isn't it? So he loves things like lists of names, basically, <laughs> and family trees. And yeah, so he'll say, oh, you know, Dad, Papa Gwyn will say, um, you know, who was this character's uncle? And Dad will be like, I don't know. And William's <laughs> like, no, I need an answer. And he's like, uh, I, I don't know. He's it, like, but you're the writer. He's like, what about this name? And then William's <laughs> yeah, like, that'll work, yeah. <laughs> It is funny that I've sometimes named some characters in the face from the folding and he looks at me and he goes, Wait, who's that? And then I tell him, he's, Oh, I remember. Because he's um he's actually never uh, read them since publishing them. He said he can't just read his work again. That makes me think of uh George R. R. Martin that he has to go to the people who run rustros.org and they wrote that uh, World of Ice and Fire book for him to make sure that he's not putting continuity errors in his own <laughs> story sometimes. That's so. crazy. Yeah. I have too much at least he's trying his best yeah mm. uh, so, we've never uh, read war and peace no yeah me neither I, it's one of those i'm like and i don't i'm not sure that i never say never but i'm just saying yeah. it's not high on my priority list i got I think it'd be, it's, like, it's a bit like malazan isn't it you can say that you've read it then i don't know because it's so i look at it it's so big I'm like yeah I'll, i will read it eventually and then i can say i've read war and peace but for no, me i'm sure i'll enjoy it yeah. for me it's like always on the list but you know when it's just like it's always in the middle you never it's never getting closer to actually picking it up but it's, it's always on the horizon mm. Mm. yeah that's that's one of those like that and i think shogun by james Cavell, once i'm just like yeah i'd like to but i just oh, I, no, I, no, I just have to i can't it. commit to anything that long as i say is i just like started rereading a game of thrones again and you know this side like those books are small <laughs> you know so <laughs> yeah i, I gotta make it like you reread guys uh, so. samurai yeah shogun uh, ed love shogun yeah see and then think that here's things like that and i'm like well maybe i should you know so, yeah. <laughs> well you're gonna have to mike i think you like it mike there's some there's scenes that are you know they could be put in a fantasy book that is just fantastic maybe not like any fantasy animals but yeah some serious mm. samurai action mm. but it's awesome that you're rereading in game of thrones some mm. of ice and fire it was kind of completely like look we reread uh fire and blood which by the way well i think you would love if you love silmarillia because it really is <laughs> i call it the westeros wikipedia page because it Brilliant, is, I'm, I'm gonna be getting to it soon and it's got all kinds of family trees in the back and try try deciphering that targaryen family tree because it goes sideways <laughs> a lot uh, but they have the that. same name. Or, yeah. I have this Folio Society version of Game of Thrones. If you guys have Folio Society, so you know it's just gorgeous. Mm. It's just unreal. Yeah. Because it had an introduction by Joe Abercrombie that I never read before. So I just wanted oh, to read wow. that. Wow. Next thing I knew, I was on page 50 of the book wow. this morning. So I blame uh, Folio Society for having such uh, <laughs> you know, sexy editions. Yeah. But also just, you know, the new show coming out and then re yeah. Fire and Blood just, just, you know, gave me that itch because I haven't reread uh song of ice and fire since right before dance with dragons came out like well whoever however long ago that was i, I didn't yeah. have any kids yet when that came out now they're 10 and 7 but you know no yeah. Correct, George. <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh, i blame not only folio society but i blame uh george for just writing an awesome story so mm. yeah, yeah i mean we, we well i recently reread a game of thrones and, and i read, read it, it well, for the first you? time about two months ago and i'm yeah, gonna be carrying yeah. on yes. next month it's fantastic oh, i absolutely adored it i mean i, I as I felt a bit wary because you know when a, a book is built up so much. Yeah. Oh sure. Um, but then it just really it, it was very different to what I was expecting. Um, I was expecting a bit more of a Jabba Crombie vibe, but it wasn't. It was, it was quite different from that. But I still absolutely adored it. 
No, that uh, first book is very much a mystery, and that's what I, that's what I think I liked about it at the time. Yeah. I, I had never read fantasy that wasn't fully dependent on magic and dragons yeah. and stuff like that, and it was just like kind of a mystery of mm. you know, succession stuff. I was like, that's yeah. just so compelling. That's what drew me in originally. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, yeah it's I'm, just amazing. And I've never watched the show either, so what I'm going to oh, do wow. is read read a book and then watch the season. And We've then, been watching. Yeah, I said that's what I was going to do on the reread is I would read a book and then I would watch the season and that way I can stop before I get to the stuff that they made that didn't have source material with it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how, so did you, how did you avoid that? The the mass hysteria of that show? Were you, were you guys, were you too young when the show was really, really popular? Well, well, I, yeah, I watched the first episode with mum and dad and then I was like, well, I'm watching this with mum and dad. So yeah. I, can't, I can't be watching this with them. So I went up and played Skyrim for a little while and then I watched it on my own. Uh, oh my God. My old podcast host that I used to have when, before I did this, uh, we would talk about Game of Thrones. After. What he was talking about, it was like season five or six. And this girl he was dating was like, do you want to stay and watch uh, Game of Thrones? He's like, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> and then she gets a text. She's like, oh, by the way, my parents are coming over. Is that okay? He's like, uh yeah i guess and then he realized we're gonna be watching some really uncomfortable sex scenes with your <laughs> parents the first oh, time no. that i meet them so yeah that was uh that was a very i couldn't even imagine i've already said i can't imagine watching that with my kids you know yeah. so i can't imagine watching it with somebody's parents yeah i think you go so red face that you actually can't see the screen anymore that it's just a blur and you're I'm just thinking i just wish this moment would end and it doesn't it just doesn't end with Game yeah, of Thrones, but uh yeah it's a good series. It's but, a good series. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a few spoilers. Like I know a few of them, but it's kind of one of them that I've, it was still worth reading it. And obviously, I, I season eight, I know a few things mm-hmm. that. That's happened. what I do because for me, as someone who was just fully entrenched in that world years before the show came out, it breaks yeah. my heart now when I hear people be like, "Oh, I hate the way the show ended," so I'm not even interested in reading the books. Mm. And, or or it's not done. I'm not reading it till it's done. Yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we got, uh, it's a lot of that, that. A lot of people have been like, well, yeah. why are you going to read it when it's not finished? But I think it's one of them that, you. I feel like I just have to. I mean, there's so, still, everyone says there's still so many amazing moments and they're amazing books, the ones that are out, mm-hmm. that even though it's a huge shame that it's not finished, that, that it's still worth reading them. Well, this person's reading your Gates of Fire book and some Joe Abercrombie, so. Uh, We'd love to hear that. That is a great combination right. as well, yeah. I respect you, Moonbot. <laughs> Now I knew you were going to get these questions here about a uh, Bloodsworn three since uh, mm-hmm. you, know, you guys are your dad's publicist now. Yeah. So they want to know uh, when, uh, when, maybe if soon, maybe some kind of uh, announcement about book three. Basically, we just want to know about what animal is going to be on the cover because we got like a little pool <laughs> going right now. A lot of us think it's going to be a bear. Some people think yeah. it's going to be an owl. Not, uh, not a sheep, like some people thought. On yeah, your dad posted a picture of a sheep the other day, and it's like, I knew it. I knew that was going to be the yeah. creature on book three. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but well, uh, see that nothing is finalized yet. It's still very early doors of book three. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so we we don't know if we did, we'd say something. But uh, yeah, see, we want to be, <laughs> we want to know so much as well. Yeah, but, I, I think we're we're the first people who are always like we we need to know. But yeah, yeah, if Dad doesn't know, he doesn't know yet. He um. So when you guys read like his draft of a book, do you ask him when's the next one coming? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight away. We're, yeah, we're usually nagging him, aren't we? Yeah. And, um, you know, as he, he'll write kind of a, a batch of chapters and then send it to us and we'll read it and kind of say what we really like. And, mm. you know, there, there's nothing we ever dislike, is there? Yeah. But, uh, the Dad, way he Dad's does... a bit of a machine. He always puts in his first draft, which is just insane. See, I just imagine you guys being kind of like slave drivers where he's like, hey, you guys want to watch a movie? You're like, no, go write. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we make dinner. I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Um, we won't eat tonight. Because <laughs> he, won't, he won't let us know anything that he's got planned because yeah. right? he wants to see our natural reactions as readers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, whilst I understand the logic, it's uh, quite frustrating when he's writing it when we were like, I need to know what's going to happen. And he's like, well, you have to read it. Yeah. Well, no spoilers to anyone out there, but just but just let just let your dad know that I'm I'm. I'm finally ready to speak to him again after the ending of book two. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it's ready. hard for us to forgive him. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to talk to him sometimes. And then uh, reading Malice, I'm looking at him thinking, you know, like I'm I, sometimes I'll, I'll listen to it on my journey uh, to work and then I'll be crying, you know, on the way to work and listen to these emotional scenes, even just like a conversation between two characters that are currently alive. And then later, you know, <laughs> oh, you're going to die later. And oh, I'll yeah. That happened to be with uh, when the first season of, of Game of Thrones came out. Yeah. And a certain character that has a very, very memorable death, like first comes on the I was like, that doesn't happen for like years from now. And I'm already like, <laughs> My heart hurts just seeing yeah. the character. Yeah, exactly. 
And then I'll get home and I'm just like, I, I, he's like, you're right, son. I'm, I can't look at you. You, you, you <laughs> Still, and he's like, it was like 10 years ago. I'm like, you, you still did it. And well, he, goes, no, he, I just wrote yeah. it. His yeah. answer is always, well, I didn't do it. I just said what happened. Yeah, I told the story. So Malazan thoughts. You got a question about Malazan. You guys done that that journey yet? I've read the first two. Um, I tried to keep up with your read long, Mike, but uh, I had to. I was one of those. I couldn't keep up with it. Don't feel bad. Suckers that had to bail. Yeah, <laughs> and I I do plan on uh, really starting soon, but uh, mm. hopefully it's when uh, I've been convincing Ed, thinking, will he join me if I get? Well, I'm thinking yeah. that you loving the Silmarillion so much, you might mm. like it because there are times where it feels like I'm reading a Dungeons and Dragons manual. It's yeah. very very dense. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you're and you're definitely an intellectual well, so you would. But I feel something. You, I have you do remind me of Philip in the way that you kind of dissect things. No so way. You would yeah. really enjoy it, yeah. yeah, the later books especially get very mm. philosophical. So if you oh, were down with that, it's going to be your yeah. jam, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I really enjoyed Gardens of the Moon. I thought it was, you know, the, in between lots of chapters, they had kind of the best moments of fantasy that I've ever read. They were just incredible action scenes. Um, and then, you know, same with, with uh, what's I can't remember, the Dead House Gates. The Chain yeah. of Dogs yeah. sequence was fantastic. But there was just too much that I just kind of didn't love. Mm. And I thought I'd... I'll carry this on another time. I will yeah. say the ending of Dead House Gate still bothers me almost two years later. So. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's it's messed mm. up. It's yeah. I think with Malazan, <laughs> I think people uh, people follow Butchu. I think we're, we're really lucky now that there's so much content to kind yeah. of help guide you along that if you need it. And um, I think uh, Library of Viking was talking about it. He said he spent, he thinks he spent more time watching videos, analyzing it yeah. than actually reading it. But um, he said that uh, there's so much out there that it is brilliant in that way. And I think I'm going to need some guidance with it. But yeah, I've um, actually had some people kind of, you know, hit me with the lashes, telling me to finish because they need my spoiler videos to tell them what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing as much as you guys are on some of these things. Yeah. So I got three left. I said I'll, I'll go yeah. back to it. I was just like, I feel like I'm going to force it if I if I kept mm. going right then. And I was like, I don't want to do that, you know. And yeah. So as well, far as like, when are you going to be back? When I'm ready, you know, yeah. it's going to happen. You know, I took a break with Wheel of Time too. It's it's just sometimes you need a break, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's one of those that they're tomes, aren't they? And you, you don't yeah, want to be having a terrible time as a reader. They get bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> as it goes. I mean, the mass market paperbacks are like this, man. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. It really. Yeah, if is. I dropped to my foot, it would break. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For yeah, sure. They are a weapon. So you guys being all about Vikings and Norse sagas and stuff like that, have you checked out Finland Saga yet? You guys read we, manga at all? We spoke uh, not long ago, just before you actually said you were gonna you were gonna start reading it, Mike. And we saw one of your Good. videos that. We were like, yeah, we definitely need to check this yeah. out. So, so um, we've never read any manga. I've recently gotten to some more gra um, graphic novels, which I've never really read before. Um, but yeah, I've really loved them. Uh, so yeah, I think we're going to check out Vin and Saga pretty soon. I've, oh, I've read Ma uh, Vagabond, which is about Miyamoto Masashi, which is very cool samurai action. That's yeah. one I get recommended a lot in my yeah. videos. And then when I said how much I like Vinland Saga, a lot of people have said that I would like Vagabond. Yeah, it's lot. just nonstop action, really, which is, yeah, it's really cool. And I, I love it. I love all, you know, kind of samurai and, mm. and Japanese mythology. So that's uh, my the first anime I've actually watched is Vinland Saga, just because I liked it so much. But uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's good. I mean, just... It, I say it very much makes me think of like if he showed you that time period on the last kingdom of when Uhtred was younger. I think that's what yeah. it kind of makes me think of something like that. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Do you like last kingdom? Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. That's what I tell people all the time. That they, they, they still whine about Game of Thrones, how it ended, whatever. Like, you know, there are other great shows out there, guys, that yeah. will kind of scratch that itch. Last Kingdom, yeah. Vikings. Like, there's some really good shows out there that will give you those vibes if you just give yeah. them a shot, you know, instead of this mm. whining. But, you know. I think everybody, needs, everybody, <laughs> yes. everybody. Oh, okay, okay. All right. You talk about whining. Uh, someone's asking oh, about no. the Rings of Power Trader. Uh, so, who had uh, twenty? Who had twenty six <laughs> minutes on the? Well, on the now, <laughs> okay. Now I, I kind of want to hand this off to Will here because he's the big Silmarillion guy. Now look, yeah, yeah. Silmarillion to me, when I read it the last time, was probably about 15, 20 years ago. Mm. A lot of it was over my head. It really, really was. So I want to say I don't have as many problems as other people do basically because i've not beholden to silmarillion however i don't like the way that they've done the rollout the way they've kind of just attacked fans fandoms and stuff like that yeah. it, it just makes me just sick when that happens yeah yeah also, the trailer they released yesterday looks really good as so i'm hoping i can turn my brain off say this is not canon just watch it yeah, for exactly. entertainment's sake i think it could be good but i don't know they hurt me with wheel of time so yeah 
Yeah, where I you, mean, you kick yourself I mean, I'm not one of those who, if they make a, a change to an adaptation, that I'm like, you cannot do that and have a bit of a freak out. But you are like, that. I, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think it's I've kind of just come to thinking that when when I watch it, I'm gonna have to treat it as something. This isn't Tolkien. This is something different. Um, it is a bit confusing. I find that it seems like they're making up a lot of the plot lines when I, when there's so much that they could take, which um, mm. it's not something that I hate as such, but it's something that. So it, they've made their job a lot harder, I think, to win people over um, by making up what well, it seems like they're going to make up a lot of the plot lines. Uh, I think there's, it looks like there's some great stuff in the trailer. Um, it's kind of one of those where I think it could go really badly wrong, but there could be some really good moments as well. It's kind of just going in with no expectations, really. But uh, I'm not going to be able to stop myself from watching it. Yeah, it'd be hard as, you know, as a Tolkien fan, I have to flip tables on some stuff, I think. Yeah. But, you know, uh, that's just I'm part gonna... of it. It's just part of us what us readers do, guys. We read this stuff and then we get mad if you know if characters' eyebrows are wrong or something, you know. We do that. <laughs> we 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 build that paper. But I'm I'm kind of different. I'm like with the adaptation, they're not coming in my room and taking the book off my shelf and saying, ha, yeah. ha, you know, it's still there. Yeah. But I'm also like, why are you adapting it if you don't want to follow the story? I mean, isn't that what made it yeah. great in the first place? But I mean, so many other things don't bother me, but yeah. some of the stuff on there, like namely Elron and Galadriel, I'm like. That's yeah. not right, you know, in that bottom yeah. thing. So, yeah, I mean, part of me also thinks as well is that obviously we want all these adaptations to do really well because it means there'll be more of yeah, them. Absolutely. And yeah. if people dislike them, then the viewership is going to go down. They won't make as many adaptations, which is often a worry as well. Which is why sometimes I really want these things to do really well. Um, so that's another. Yeah, we side want of it. dad's stuff published. Come on, we yeah. we want to see that on the screen. I've been, you know? I've been t every time I talk about that, I will tag HBO, I will tag Hulu, <laughs> I'll tag all of them. Be like this, yeah. that, 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 you know, none of none, none of them come knocking yet, huh? That's I mean, yet. what I've been doing is is probably what lots of other people are doing and comparing you know, Rings of Power and House of Dragon trailers side by side, and it, 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 it House of Dragon just has this HBO feel where I trust it, mm -hmm. um, and I really don't trust Rings of Power. I mean, I. I'm I'm not huge on the Silmarillion, so I'm not too. I don't know all the backstory and all that. Um, but I just want the acting to be good, and I want it to feel believable. Like you know, like we want fantasy to be, even though it's got elves and these halfbirds that have been made up. Um, you know, we still want it to be. We want it to feel real. We want we want, we want to love it, don't we? Yeah, that feels like that feels like they they believe that no one will understand that it's Lord of the Rings if it doesn't have hobbits in it. It's like I know, I know. I I do feel like they've sat down. And they thought, okay, we need as like we need to have hobbits because people won't know it's talking. We need um some of these elves because they won't these characters because they yeah. won't know it's the same unless yeah. they're in it. Yeah, um, I wasn't gonna, I'm not this big hater. I want this stuff to do good because that's the yeah, only right. way all these fantasy series that I love in here. We'll ever mm. get a shot at being adapted. I mean, I think about because of Game of Thrones, we wouldn't have ever got Witcher. Hell, we'd probably never be getting this Rings of Power if that wasn't yeah. such a success. So I yeah. want, I want more than just one successful fantasy series. Mm. You know, yeah. so that yeah. way we get more of them. And yeah. the, the thing that HBO did so well with Game of Thrones is that kind of most of the older characters were really seasoned actors, mm. and then all the younger characters hadn't been cast before. So they had that kind of mix where the older characters, the other actors, were kind of teaching them how to do it right. And I thought, you know, I, we re, re watching season one. I think the acting, for the most part, is brilliant, and it feel it just lends itself rather than feeling wooden. And you know, watching the Rings of Power trailer, it just feels like the dialogue yeah. is is wooden, and that straight away, I'm I'm already upset with it. You know, I don't care what the Balrog looks like or anything. I just. <laughs> Yeah. So I say, like visually, sure, it's five hundred million dollars on one season of TV. It should yeah. look incredible. But, yeah, you know, exactly. You can't. Yeah. you can't pay for good writing, I guess. I don't and know. people moan about kind of the the Hobbit filter, you know, that that the, those films seem to have. But I don't mind too much. I just want it to be, you know, fun, and I want it to have moments that make me feel like I'm I'm in Middle Earth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I mean, mm -hmm. when I watched Fellowship of the Ring, that was the year before you were born. And I was, you know, four years old. I was and, older. Yeah. <laughs> and I was obsessed with it. I actually saw the two towers on the day you were born. Yeah. You know, you were being born and some, you know, one of our family. So I want to go to the hospital or the movie theater. Yeah. Well, you know, I was yeah, like, will be there for a while. Come see or see my little brother. So it, it, it was a hard <laughs> one. I had to flip a coin in the end yeah. and obviously Tolkien wins. But so then, then. Um, I, w that I was two days old and in the cinema with the... Uh, family watching two towers so yeah, um, amazing that's amazing. yeah that's a good um, first movie right there right. oh 100 yeah. so yeah uh, but i i have the films T jackson's films just a part of me mm. you know at that age i watched yeah. them made such an impression that just absolutely love it so, so 
Yeah, hey, apparently you're a fashion icon. You got this guy hooked on wearing default clothing sweatshirts. There you go. Thanks, Moonboy. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people say I'm a fashion icon, so I'll take that when it comes. I, I did make sure when I put this thumbnail together, I got one one of your hats. So <laughs> thank you. Hats. I, it's I, a bit I, warm. I, today. I wore a hat, I think, once, and it was in that one when I when I just got back from that cruise. Yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, it's yeah. I don't know because I was was kind of sunburned a little bit i think and i was just like, yeah. right, well, let's just let's just let's just record this and yeah yeah, yeah. Don't worry about the other stuff yeah I, sh I shaved my head in last year end of last year and then the sun came out and it just got burned straight away i was <laughs> gotta, so remember, 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 gotta remember to wear a to, to wear yeah. a hat for never sure. thought of this at all but you know i blame dad he didn't really tell me that, kaiju's got a good one here mike shackle you guys just talked to him right mm -hmm. yeah i yeah. he I mean, sent me actually uh his first book like about a year ago Mm -hmm. I just keep forgetting to to you know put on the list to do, but you guys obviously really really enjoy yeah. his work, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I'd love you, for you to read it, Mike. I think if you did a review of it, a lot hopefully lots of people would then want to pick Patrick it up. Was really it's high on so, it too, yeah. It's, yeah, it's so underrated, and yeah, really, really not enough people are talking about it. And it really is a perfect book in my opinion. It's it's so fast paced, mm -hmm. and it really has those kind of Abercrombie meets Tarantino vibes. Well, I mean, um. For I those who do, we, we had an interview with him a few days ago. So lucky to have that. It was on the release of his uh, third book in the trilogy. So if anyone only likes to read when the everything in the series is released, this is for you then. Um, and he said it. He just thought, what if, what if Sauron won? What if he took over Gondor, Rohan, and the Shire? And that was kind of the premise. What if the mm. bad guys won? Um, Sauron and the Shire is where we start, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, basically. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so, and it's just such a fast-paced book. It's very dark very dark um and but we're kind of thrust into the lives of kind of ordinary people and how they're reacting to everything in their world changing um and yeah it, i just absolutely loved it it's one of those that has been really uh, rated very highly by reviewers and bloggers but it's not caught on to as many people as it um as it deserves i think yeah that happens i mean yeah i i don't think that like i am like this great influence that gets everybody to read so i know it gets some people to read some stuff like i've I mean, even when I talked to Joe Abercrombie, he told me he feels sometimes he feels like I've sold more of his books than his publisher had. And that was like the coolest <laughs> compliment I could have ever got. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I I do know there are a lot of things I talk about all the time. Red Rising, for example, that people just still just will not give a chance because they have these preconceived notions about it. Mm. So, I mean, all I can do is like I did with Jay Kristoff books and just, yeah. you know, it's not what you think it is. I judge books by their covers sometimes too. I didn't want to read Red Rising when I first saw it because I saw the covers. That looks like yeah. Hunger Games, you know? Uh, so it's sometimes, you know, covers can be bad, you know? And sometimes yeah, covers yeah. can be awesome, like, you know, Faithful and the Fallen's covers. Yeah. yeah. Well, or it can be misleading as well, where sometimes you think this is going to be up my street and sometimes it isn't. But I remember you did a, a poll last year. Was it, was it seeing if you've got anyone to pick up any series? And I think Java Crombie is top and then Daz Books. Uh, yeah, so I yeah, think so. you, you are definitely an influence in that way. I, what I said is I didn't want to I didn't want to say that I, I got people more people to read Faithful and Fallen. I was like, I noticed after I talked about it, all of a sudden I started seeing everybody putting pictures of it on their shelves. So there we yeah. go. So if I was able to help in any way there, I'm, I'm really I mean, ready. yeah, I'll you watch your did. videos, Mike. And, and uh, yeah, I wanted to read Red Rising straight away. Yeah. So that's what I did. And I think books just need more exposure, don't they? It might, mm -hmm. it might, it might not be that just one person, you know, one booktuber does a review and then everyone goes and reads it. But I think if, you know, a couple, two or three, people mm -hmm. that you know people actually listen to they read yeah it, you know yeah i kind of been doing that with uh christopher rocchio and his sun eater yeah. books is like yeah almost no one was talking about this guy and I, every day i see more and more people that are buying his book so i'm i'm, yeah. I'm really happy for that guy because i think he's he's really really good i think he's next he's the next frank herbert which you know is a big deal to, for me to say something like yeah, that yeah, so exactly. I, I really think that people giving his books a shot giving john's books a shot it's always just great when you can kind of pass those things forward because i mean that's 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 why i do this and that's why i'm going to read brian lee durfee's books finally i feel awful that i've waited this long because he sent me his books like two years ago i feel so so bad mm. and he's such a genuinely nice guy have you guys yeah, talked to him before? yeah he's, he's the best and so i'm i think uh august september taking october off because i do nothing but scary stuff in october and then <laughs> november his final book of his trilogy comes out yeah yeah. So I'm really dive into those. You guys, you guys checked his books out yet? Because I know they get a lot of comparisons to your dad's. Yeah, yeah. The first time we saw him, actually, he did a video. Where he was like basically, basically saying John Gwynn is my is this is me, but in in England instead yeah. of America. <laughs> and, you know, they they they're bald. They got the beard. They like similar <laughs> books, and he he was just kind of comparing them both. It's so funny. Uh, but you know, we'd love to read them. I, I've I've been seeing lots of good reviews as well and good news yeah. about about uh, his two books that are out at the moment. 
Hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how that goes. Cause there are some people that have read it on the discord and like enough, they're going to mm-hmm. reread it. Yeah, and, they, and they do say that they feel like that, that, Brian's such a goofball on his channel. They just assume that his book couldn't be, you know, that epic, but apparently it really, really, yeah. Did. So yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to see, but I think mm-hmm. he even told me he, when he read faithful in the fall and after I talked about it, he said, he does feel like it, it's, it's, it's his series is very similar, but way more R rated. And I'm like, well, I think faithful in the fall has got heads flying all over the place. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> all right, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I got kind of behind on the questions, guys. So I'm going like all the way back to the front. So if you ask one and you, I didn't answer it and you want to go back, just don't be scared to ask again. So I just didn't want to be an hour behind on questions. You know? yeah. <laughs> so what are you guys reading right oh. now? What are you reading right now? I'm reading yeah. the same, really. And Williams, again, ground me yeah. down. And uh, yeah, Is that your first read? Ride. I mean, the yeah. first book I got Ed to read was Rage of Dragons and he mm. loved it. That's and nice. then I got him to read We Are the Dead and he loved it. So I was two for two. I mean, Similarly, and you're you're a bit on the edge at the moment. I, I, yeah, I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna love it as much as you do, but I've I've just got to Baron Luthien. I know <laughs> the story of Baron Luthien because Dad always used to tell me. So um, but yeah, just the beginning. I'm, obviously, it's a history book, isn't it? But um, I'm not in love with it. Yeah, that's why I try to tell people that were reading Fire and Blood and they didn't yeah. understand. Like, they, how am I supposed to read this? It's like not like in a narrative form. Like just because that's yeah. the West Rose Wikipedia page. I mean, yeah. it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome, but if you want like a lot of dialogue, that's that's that's, that's probably not your read. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's definitely it's, one though. It's, it's just a lot of names, aren't there? It's a lot <laughs> of names. But they're really I, like, I don't know if this is a joke, Caitlin, or not. I don't know if this is a joke, <laughs> but yes, yes. No, it is not really. No, we just say we are. What, yeah. It's just a coincidence. But uh, uh, yeah, what else? You this what audio book are you listening to at the moment? Malice. Oh, oh yeah, man, it's, yeah. So you're reading the Faith and the Fallen. Mm-hmm. That links ne- yeah. nicely into the next question as well. Now you guys know I don't I don't audio book, but I've heard I always hear a lot of feedback about the mm-hmm. audio books. And the ones that I've heard about Faith on the Fallen is that the pronunciations are just weird. Like I think he calls didn't he call Kaiwan Cohen or something like that? Something weird. Yeah. yeah well, it, it is. It, I mean, we we say Kaiwan in our house, but it is that is actually how you're meant to say Cohen because Dad takes a lot of inspiration from um, Welsh mythology and. And Irish mythology and Gaelic as well. So actually, lots of the names, especially in Arden and you know, where Corban is as well. Um, yeah, that's how you actually say them. Yeah, so, your dad used to teach, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, it's something, completely different. Talk, something that I've, I've actually adopted since our discussion is he talked about if you're going to change the pronunciation of something to a certain way, just make sure you stay consistent. So he said, if you say Siwan, you need to say Sorbin. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I was like, wow. So when I was reading Malazan everything i i kind of use that 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 methodology with but you know yeah, yeah. i couldn't remember who half those characters were after a while anyway so. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i have an answer to this question but what would you guys think faithful and fallen or bloodsworn first does it really matter i say faithful yeah. because it's done yeah and it's awesome but i don't <laughs> think it can go wrong yeah i think it's one of those that if you're if you love that kind of spin on traditional fantasy i'd go faithful and fallen uh but if you really love that norse stuff then obviously go with the blood swarm. But um, they, they both have those elements where there's great characters, but you have people who you are rooting for. Mm. Um, it's I wouldn't, it's not grimdark as such. Um, but yeah, read both. <laughs> yeah, I would say buy them all and then read them all. So, um, you I know, mean, I, I did that. It's so I, weird. I remember, yeah, I remember everyone, maybe that. you guys have the same thing. You ever have this thing where you just know that an author is going to click for you before yeah. you've read anything? For whatever reason, I just had just the feedback I'd heard from the, the I mean, Okay, Patrick really sold me hard on when he was saying that this is the best, you know, Stormlight and 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 Joe Abercrombie and this. That's like my three favorite things. I'm like, okay, well, I got to check it out. So he it was on my radar, but he really helped me push it up. And I just for whatever reason, I had bought this when the last uh the last uh Blood and Bone book came out. Mm-hmm. I bought it before I had read a single thing, but I had all these books. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, well. I'm going to read that next year. And then I was like, you know what? Right when I read, when I, when I finished Will of Time, I started Malice and I read like 200 pages in the first day. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to be okay with this. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that we love to hear that. Like, I remember uh, you showing it them all on your shelf when you'd only read Malice. We were like, all sitting there in the awesome. living room with, with YouTube on the TV. And we were like, we really like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that worked out. Yeah. Because oh, uh, I, I've said that there's not a lot of fantasy. I've got, I'd say that. All the time, people are like, "You ever gonna reread Wheel of Time?" I'm like, "No, 
No, it's too <laughs> long. I'm too old. I started yeah. too late. I've got so much stuff that I want to read that I'll never be able to finish before I die. Yeah. Why am I going to stop and waste all that time to reread 14 books again? Mm. But I said, but I will reread Faithful on the Fallen again. Yeah. Which, you know. I mean, you get those different books saying that there's some huge books that like Faithful and Fallen and Empire of the Vampire that are very fast paced, aren't they? And you mm. can just kind of blitz through. Um, but there's also some that uh, I'd say you couldn't like. Uh, I've only read uh, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson and I really enjoyed it. But I couldn't read like 300 pages in one go. Um, yeah. I took it quite slowly, um, even though I lo- you can love a book, but take it slowly. And uh, yeah, so you get those different types. And I think uh, it's awesome that the Faith and Fallen, you can just kind of just blitz. Yeah, it's it. highly bingeable. That's why I said it was like amazing. Those books are just door stoppers. And I, how yeah. I was flying through them. So every single chapter ends with a cliffhanger. And I'm, I'm like, no, I want to get back to Corbett. And yeah. it's like, oh, Castell. I'm like, oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I would say that was uh, what I was going through and say that I loved about it was just the quick chapters. It was almost yeah. like the was a thriller version of a fantasy, just the quick chapters, yeah. the cliffhangers. And that there was never a character that came up where I was like, oh, God, not another chapter by this person. You know, I never <laughs> had that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in, that, that, in regards to the question, I, I always say if you like kind of dark fantasy and Vikings, read The Blood Swan. Uh, if you like Celtic mythology and a bit of a lighter tone, and some kind of classic-y tropes, read Faith and Fallen. Mm. And just quickly mentioning on the same with the cliffhanger end, is I think that's one of the reasons I love We Are the Dead. Uh, it ends with, it's kind of that same kind of style, very short chapters um, that are very quick, but they have an, an, ele- an event in every single chapter, and it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger that uh, you just want to be back with them, and then you're like, oh, I'm with this character, this is awesome as well. Yeah, and there's, there's a great cast in We Are the Dead. It is like a Tarantino film, and what you know, one of the characters is a teenager, and they the way that they're getting back at the invaders of their of their country is by kind of being a bit of a terrorist, and they're blowing things up, and you know, and the kind of the dilemma with them is that they don't really care who gets in the way. They're mm. they're going to cause as much damage to this army, whether it's civilians and families around as well. Yeah, and then you know, there's there's like an old kind of crippled warlord as well. Yeah, it? yeah, and a really good cast. So um, yeah, definitely go check I out. You guys had me at Tarantino meets Abercrombie, so that's <laughs> a, we're doing a pretty good sales job here. So, and the series <laughs> is about to be complete, right? That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, uh, last week came out two, three days, days ago. Oh, it's yeah. already okay. Great. Yeah, great. two days ago, I think. Yeah. All right. So that interview you guys did with him is is it spoiler free or? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. So we did it for the release. I think there's one spoiler, isn't there? But it's not too bad. It's very not nice. so bad. Okay. Yeah, uh, real quick, reading uh, off grid here, your question about fire and blood. I wouldn't say skim it, but here's the thing is just read the section called the dance of dragons. That's what the show is based off of. If you mm-hmm. want to know what's going to happen on the show. Okay. So that, that, that's it. It's, it's probably about a 700 page book, but that section's about 300 pages. So Brilliant. up to you. I think you'll enjoy it if you give it a shot and it leaves so much because it's told from the viewpoint of a maester who admits he's biased. Mm-hmm. So it could be unreliable narrators. Yeah. So that to me, I was like, that has got to be the best thing for a showrunner to be like, hey, if we make a tiny change, they can't get mad because they can say, hey, history is written by liars, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> they can, just, land, they can yeah. plaster that everywhere. Yeah. I mean, so, I am yeah. excited for House of Blood. Yeah. I watched the trailer and I thought it looks brilliant. I mean, I'm a big fan of Matt Smith. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. The big Doctor Who guy. Yeah. I'm all about yeah, Matt yeah. Smith. People, people that are telling me, oh, I just can't take Matt Smith seriously. I was like, that guy's a badass actor. He's going to surprise mm-hmm. you. I, I, mean, I watched The so Crown recently, and he is so good in that. I think The um, Crown, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's underrated, and I think, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, they've got some good actors in there. Some really already, good, and some I, really yeah, good cast. CGI look great as well. Who, you know, we all need more dragons, hmm. don't we? A question I have: obviously, it's a prequel, but there's no spoilers for Game of Thrones, is there? I mean, there's stuff that they talk about. The characters will talk about. They talk about like, oh yeah, because you know, this many years ago, Aegon the Conqueror took it. Yeah. Stuff that they reference. This just gives you context. To all that. Yeah. Stuff. Really cool stuff that really- become like myth almost to the books proper. That the those characters, stuff that they talk about, you get all that stuff about the yeah, Targaryen yeah, yeah. rule. So, yeah, it's really. Oh, cool. that's great. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that soon. So for me with this one, what good thing have you read recently that all booktube isn't talking about? I mean, you guys just kind of talked about Mike Shackle. I think mm. that's a pretty good answer, but you got anything else? Let me think. Well, I mean, obviously we talk a lot about historical fiction, as you said, and that's probably most of it where I can't find any historical, fi- uh, any booktubers really talk about historical fiction, uh, mm. really. And I'm trying to think of something else. Looking at all I, the um, behind me. I read Ride the Wind, which is, it, it, it was labelled as a romance. You know, I don't really read romance, but I've, I've been researching um, this Native American band called Comanche. Um, okay. And it was a book set in that. And there's, a, there's this um, person called Cynthia Ann Parker, who's very famous 
and that she was uh, a young German girl in Texas and she got captured by a band of the Comanche and then she was kind of indoctrinated and then she she married a, a chief um, and then they had a child together who was, you know, part white, part Comanche uh, and he was the last Comanche chief called Kwana Parker. So, I mean, I love that story and that's all about Cynthia Ann Parker and that um, and her, mm. her life in the Comanche and it's, it's an amazing story and yeah, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't read like a romance but it just reads like a, a grand historical historical fiction epic and i think that is fantastic the writing mm. is beautiful and there's lots of emotional emotional scenes so um yeah i don't see anyone talking about that and i've actually got a fancy one i've got um uh, the counselor by ej beaton which came out last year um and it's political intrigue um and i thought me and ed thought oh, okay we'll enjoy this but we both ended up absolutely loving it mm. um and yeah so it's political intrigue we're in a fancy kind of machiavellian political world um, and so there's a lot of dialogue. It's a lot about kind of that dynamic between characters, but it's done really well and kind of that mystery aspect is in there as well, which I think in quite a lot of fantasy books I'm reading lately, I'm, I'm really loving. Like, yeah, and, I'm and currently reading Jade City, which is uh, a lot of fun. That's really, really good. I think for me, no, no. anything that's not fantasy that I talk about, that, that, that really is. I mean, anything that's not fantasy. <laughs> uh, so, for example, I just talked about Robert McCann recently yeah. who i just yeah. love, completely blown away by and i'm going to keep talking about it because the two books i've read are just all timers for me yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i, I talked about boys life we're doing swan song soon which is just an incredible incredible book so i think if you like stephen king you'd easily like robert mccammon that's the way he was always told to me i was like yeah sure and now i'm like yeah. okay yeah i can see that for <laughs> sure i mean i've added them to my list and it'd be interesting actually to talk about some uh some stephen king because uh, i've only read a few but it's one of those that I'm planning on reading more, and I've recently read different seasons. Okay. Yeah, I think I always tell people the good season is a good place to start if you don't want, like, just, like, that's for the people who say Stephen King can't write. I'm like, read different seasons. The guy yeah. can write. He can <laughs> yeah. write for Apt sure. Pupil oh, is my pupil. favorite short story of his. It's just insane. Which one? Apt Pupil. Oh, Apt Pupil is messed up. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That's one of those uh, that I, I did recently. I talked about, like, my favorite protagonist, and they, they, they're like, you didn't bring the kid from uh, Apt Pupil? I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. So yeah, if you put him on the list, I'll be really worried. <laughs> Kagan, the Damned, and the Blade of Faith are two of my favorite fantasies of the year. They're two books I haven't really reviewed much on BookTube, which I think is a shame. Any hmm. interest? I, is that? It's like like I haven't I've never heard of either of these. Is the Blade of Faith um, uh, David Douglas? David Douglas, I think. Yeah, 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 I've not read but, it, but um, I've seen. I haven't heard of Kagan, the Damned, but we will put put them hmm. on our list and we'll check them out. Uh, one I've had like that. Sort of, it's sort of Kagan, isn't the same thing, is it? No, no, that's different. That's a good book as well. Yeah, I mean, um, I've I think one that I've heard about that people say. I think Elliot Brooks was talking about um, Engines of Empire, Richard Ford, which I've got waiting for me to read, and she's saying a lot more people need to read this. I've not really heard anyone else talk about that. No, but as you guys know, I'm always interested in recommendations. I mean. I would never have found their dad's books if it weren't for recommendations. Oh, well, we, we've got a lot. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, the whole reason that all the time is like, okay, why am I going to go to the store and buy more books? And I've got all these. Well, first I'm a book collector. And also because yeah. I run this channel, I get so many recommendations guys and people will send me stuff that they want me to read. They think that I would really, really like, and I feel like I owe it to them when they spend their money to send me something to read yeah. it. You know, so well, with your book hauls, I kind of sit down with a notebook and I'm like, okay. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, that's the people all the time. How do you, how do you make a schedule? I'm like, because I will just, Hey, I'm going to read game of Thrones for the 400th <laughs> time, you know, because if I don't, that's, that's, that's what I do. But uh, yeah. yeah, you gotta make, you gotta, you gotta, you got to make some kind of schedule or a plan yeah. or else uh, I will find myself starting like mm. nine different series book yeah. ones all at once. And that's just a disaster mm. for me personally. Yeah. Well, I mean, me and Ed made a list recently of like how many series have we finished and how many series we've partway through. Oh, it's, and, um, it's pitiful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I so mean, many. <laughs> it kind of terrified really me. Obsessing. One column longer than the other one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it kind of terrified me how many ongoing series I have. I thought I'll oh, maybe like seven to ten. There's like yeah. How do you guys do like, with, with DNF? You guys on. DNF a lot? No, no. no I, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever I've ever DNF. I'd say is I don't really DNF books, but I've gotten mm -hmm. to the point where I will DNF a series if I feel like a series yeah. has kind of lost yeah. me. I will walk away from it. Yeah, yeah, no, so yeah. It, it does suck when it feels like you've invested that much time in something and you're not going to finish it. So I get why some people can't do that. Like Brent Weeks Lightbringer series, I read four just tomes. There's one book left, and I'm like not doing it you know <laughs> so, stuff like that's just kind of heartbreaking and yeah sure, probably heartbreaking to the author too but you know it's just it's i don't know I've, yeah I've, yeah i, I agree with you that i want to read 
Hmm. I, know, I, know, I mean, I've seen lots of people say, you know, with malice that, oh, it's too slow. I mean, obviously those people, I, I would. I never got that. Everybody's like no. the first half. Like, have you guys read traditional fantasy ever? They've yeah. got to establish kingdoms. They got to establish lands. They got to establish characters and family trees. And I, I find that if that's slow, guys, you guys ever read Shannara? You guys ever read Fellowship of the Ring? Holy shit. Yeah. So that, that I mean, look, people. People who read that, I mean, read the Cimmerillion, <laughs> that's slow. I mean, come on. But I mean, it's great. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hacking at the Cimmerillion. But um, I mean, yeah, I mean, lots of people then say the end of Malice is amazing. So I always try and give a book, you know, if I'm not enjoying it, I'll mm. still read it to the end because even the last page might have something that sticks with me for a long time. So um, yeah, yeah well, I won't do it. Discord, right someone drops in the Discord in the comments and says, man, I thought Malice was like awesome. I'm like, well, then you're going to love the series. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. only, it gets better from there, you know? Mm. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with the DNF question, I think so, I won't DNF, but sometimes if I'm really not enjoying a read, I will skim read. And, uh, until... I can think of three books I've DNF'd in like the last decade, probably. I yeah. just did one recently that Remembrance of Earth's Past. Like, yeah, this isn't for me. Definitely <laughs> not for me. So that was really just like, yeah, I know this isn't going to be. be yeah. yeah, few and far between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was quite close with um, In the Name of the Rose, which is kind of like a, a, a medieval like kind of crime thriller. Um, I was thought I'd really love it, um, but I got about halfway through and I was like, this is way too dry and there's not really anything going on. But um, I was close to DNFing, but I kind of pushed through. And yeah, it, it didn't really reap the rewards, but I'm glad. Like, it'd be one of those that it would just be in the back of my mind thinking, what if I, what if it was amazing? Oh, I read um, Last of the Mohicans and oh, I just hate reading it by the end. Oh, like so, right now I was reading that Codex Solera series by Jim Butcher yeah. and I was like, I'm just not caring for it. And I've got that feeling that, you know, the people who quit watching Breaking Bad right before it, like an episode before it got amazing. That's what I'm worried about with stuff like that. Yeah. You know, what, yeah. what if it's like the next chapters when it pops off? You know, that, that, that that's always my worry about quitting a series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Problems of being a reader. Yeah. Yeah. You've got FOMO if you're missing out then. You just <laughs> yeah. don't yeah. that. Uh, uh, Thomas, my answer. advice on Wheel of Time take breaks. Don't listen to people <laughs> tell you got to read them all in a row. Take yeah. breaks, switch genres. Read some sci-fi, read some thrillers, read some horror, something like that. Mm, yeah. Read some one-offs. But yeah, take your time. I took a six-month break between book six and seven. And it helped me a ton. Mm. A ton. Yeah. So From up being burned out, I mean, when me and Ed started listening to um, a few audio books, I think it really helped because we often listen to a different genre on each one, so it doesn't get confused at all. Yeah. Um, but it really helped to like just keep it fresh, where if I'm kind of burning out reading physically, I've still got that audio book section, which is really enjoyable. Uh, so yeah, that helps as well. Yeah, just a different medium. Yeah, I think um, switch it up a little bit. You see this faithful on the fall on a weekend. Oh yeah, what's about yeah? What on Sarah reads? Because yeah. you're talking about like three thousand pages here. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's all. Yeah, that could be us. And yeah, we won't tell Dad that there's someone out there who read it quicker than us. <laughs> um, but we we still respect you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if this is real or not. Best. Booktubers are you three? I'm assuming us three here. Uh, James Testicles, who I've never heard <laughs> of, Dumbo Nuts, <laughs> and Jake Bishop. But I would just say, you know, Jake's the dude, and obviously the brothers here are awesome. Uh, I, I don't know about Jumbo Nutsack, but I am honored to be put in such prestigious company. <laughs> so, yeah, I really am. So. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. James Testicles is, yeah, he's a pretty good guy. <laughs> so that's a real channel. This isn't a uh, yeah, I, I, I imagine it's Jimmy Nuts, but, um, oh okay all right that makes sense then i'm like <laughs> yeah I, I yeah i mean i love uh library of alexandria his his energy is just brilliant he's so funny and philip is just uh, yeah philip's brilliant Sarah awesome. Reeds as well. Well. Um, yeah there's so many out there that we love of, of course jimmy nuts is you know jimmy nuts made me want to read game of thrones again as well he did some really good videos yeah um I'm but, with the old yeah me. i mean I, I haven't been able to watch booktube properly for, for a little while just work's been mad but um yeah i do love it I see. See, spreading the gospel of faith on the fallen here. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. We do as well. Very we nice. do as well. We owe you a lot of money, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we, owe, we owe you a few pints. Look, I'll always say, all I want to do is pass on the good word, but I would also cash the check. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but people all time, <laughs> you know, you know, how many people, because me and Madison, when we were talking about the Wheel of Time show, we were trying to stay positive about the beginning because I like to stay positive yeah. on the channel. You have no idea how many people thought that I was on Amazon's payroll because I did that and I did Kindle videos. And I'm like, you know what? I probably sold a thousand Kindles for those assholes and I've never seen a cent. So they wouldn't even send me a demo unit 
yeah. for that review. So uh, I'm not taking any money from Amazon. Give me a break. You do, you do a video me. next of you, you know, outside a new mansion you've just bought and driving yeah. Lamborghini or something. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not part of Amazon, you know. Yeah, like like when I bought it, I bought a new car earlier this year. People are like, "Oh, that book two money is paying off." I'm like, "No, business school is paying off." Not yeah. book two money is is That's I get a lovely car book. as well, Mike. A lovely car. So maybe people who have a much more successful channel than me are doing that. But yeah, no, I, I my my real job is 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 doing stuff like that. So. Yeah. You guys are reading Star Wars books. Are you guys into Star Wars at all? Yeah, so I've I've read um so we played the old game, not the old Republic. So I've read like, the Revan. old Republic. Yeah, yeah I've read great. Revan, and that's the only book i've read star wars wise um, well, as long as yeah. you guys are staying away from the disney canon then i i you it's got the mic stamp of approval so you stick stick with that original canon i think yeah <laughs> i mean uh, yeah i'm 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 burned <laughs> out with with disney star wars and and marvel as well i just just need to take a break i mean i really i, I, mean, I love the the prequels they're great um i was brought up in a time when the sequels were you know i enjoyed them as a child I, if i watch them now i'd probably hate them but i love you mcgregor so um Oh, you mean the prequel? Yeah, yeah. The thing is, like, oh, yeah, I'm getting, yeah, I was look, the sequels humbled me on that. It's like, yeah. as someone who grew up with the original trilogy, yeah. I had all these problems with the prequels, and then the sequels came out. I was like, well, you know, it could always be worse. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, I love I the prequels. Actually vindicated the prequels to my generation of, you know, at least it still felt like Star Wars. Yeah, you know? yeah. So there's, there's, yeah. there's always that. But uh, I yeah. really enjoyed the the Force Awakens. Is that that is that the first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then, um, and then the second movie like even feeling. broke that one. So yeah. yeah, and then it really goes down mm. here when it's just. I mean, we we were sitting as a family in the cinema watching the last of that. Yeah, trilogy. it just we were just laughing at it. Like, <laughs> Uh, this is like, the even like mum, even mum who falls asleep in every film in the cinema. You know, she'll eat, eat the nachos and then she'll just snore for the rest of the film. <laughs> even starts. she woke up and she was laughing like this is ridiculous. I mean, it's oh, the first wow. film Ed ever yeah. fell asleep. To the I did fall asleep. Yeah, I don't fall asleep. So, um, but um, it says it all. But uh, the Force Awakens, I thought that did a really good job of like paying homage to the originals, but it had its own stuff as well. Just the music's great. The music, <laughs> yeah, great. yeah, yeah. Those movies didn't deserve John Williams scores. That's that's no that's, way. That's, it's a no shame, way. but uh, as for the question, Faye the Faye the Jedi, probably someday I'd probably like to reread New Jedi Order again, just because I was reading those when they mm. were coming out, like originally yeah. and stuff. So I, I've, I, I sometimes I use this phrase that people think is like an elitist, and it's not the way that I mean it. I'm saying that like I feel like sometimes with Song of Ice Fire and also Star Wars EU stuff, it's like I feel like I've forgotten more stuff than a lot of people ever know. I don't yeah. mean that as like a humble brag. I'm just being like I knew a lot and I don't yeah. remember a lot of it now. Yeah. So that's what I mean by that. So yeah. uh, I would read to revisit hmm. some of those uh, Star Wars books before I got because I go into Fate and the Jedi, Fate, Fate, Fate of the Jedi, and I'd be like, who, who the hell are these people? You know, I probably do that. So uh, I never say never. I think with yeah. the time I was ready to read, I was like, okay, I got a little behind on it. Uh, I'll just wait for it to be complete. It's almost complete. I'll wait, and then we got the news about that they were wiping out the EU canon. It wasn't a thing, and it broke my heart. So I didn't ever read them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I watched your video when you're saying where to start with yeah. kind of Star Wars reading. And so, yeah, I've made a few notes there. And it's, it's another one of those. The TBR part is just endless, isn't it? It is, yeah. It, so it, I say, it is I, a problem to have. One thing that I'm never going to run out of is things to read, guys. So yeah. that's what like, well, how can you go get more books? Like, I'm never going <laughs> to stop reading, you know? And, yeah. Uh, who cares if I don't have you know, room for them anymore? You know? Sometimes I wish I only enjoyed one genre because I could get through a lot more books then. But when you want to read historical fiction and, you know, mm -hmm. other things like that and, you know, literary fiction, mm -hmm. it just goes but, on forever. But also, I think it's taught me a few skills. Like I have mastered the art of making the most of shelf space now to fit because <laughs> I've got piles of books around the sides that I've just been looking, thinking. <laughs> I How think many that before I started this channel and I still had enough space to like front face books. Now I got them stacked <laughs> on four. So it's yeah, <laughs> it good uh, yes, Sarah, I'll be reading Fairy Tale by Stephen King the day it comes out. You better yeah. believe yeah. it. Yeah, I think always. we will as well. King yeah. and Abercrombie always skip to the front of the line, you know. Yeah. And if, if George ever puts mm -hmm. out another book in Song of Ice and Fire, that will be a, I'm calling in sick to work yeah. for mm -hmm. a couple of days to read that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely. mean, I. I read um I'd only read Sarah's lot and then later came out and I just thought, okay, I'm just gonna try this and I loved it. I thought it was Sarah fantastic. Foster. I read that on release day. Um I, absolutely brilliant. I, I just really loved that. And then since then I need to read more. I've read uh, different seasons. I'm gonna read Carrie soon. Mm. Um and yeah, definitely fairy. Oh, I've I've read Gun Gunslinger, book one. Which I didn't quite click with, but it's uh, quite a few people. A lot said. of people are iffy on Gunslinger. It's, it's a prologue, it really is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people said try book two first to see how you really feel about it because a lot of people fall in love with it with the series then mm, so you guys read count of monte cristo 
No, no. that shames me. I would love I, to. I, I know that's a bit of a hefty book as well, isn't it? <laughs> that's one of those. It's like as long as like Shogun or something. I say yeah. if you got the time, do it. It's it's worth yeah. it. I read it. In, I read it in high school and realized that I had read the abridged version. So oh. <laughs> right after high school, I got the unabridged version, which is just massive. But I was yeah. like, that book has at least like 200 plot twists in it. It's amazing yeah. how much is in that book. Do so I think that every revenge story after that has, has, has used that as a template. And yeah. I just think it's, it's amazing. It's timeless and it's crazy. It's like 200 something years old mm. and it's still, still very relevant. There's some people reading yeah. it that we have a classics read, read classic read along uh, channel on the discord. And people were reading that one right now, but they're taking two months to read it because it's it's just so damn big. But yeah. does best serve cold take much from Count of Monte Cristo? I think so. I said what's best serve cold. I said felt like if Joe Abercrombie wrote a much more condensed version. Yeah, of Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> but God, I love best serve cold. It's so fun. Yeah. I'm a Nakomo Casca. <laughs> I love Nakomo Casca in the original the original books, and I always yeah. like. I wish we'd get more. So when that book came out, it gave me exactly what I wanted. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's some oh, great characters. Yeah. Friendly is yeah. awesome. You know, us we could talk first law for days. Hey, don't you talk shit about his dice. <laughs> <laughs> that's some clear, good, that uh, is some good advice. Only that is Joe cool. could come up with something like that. I mean, yeah. like, apologize yeah. to my dice. So, apologize yeah. to my dice. Yeah. That scene in the house of uh, Cardotti is just fantastic. So that's having cool. an author as a dad, how does that affect the way you read his work? Is it more or less enjoyable, I mean, or, or are you more or less critical? I think um it's quite weird because often when we're, we we just see him, it's like, you know, Dad, Papa Gwyn. And then we read these books and we're like, oh my <laughs> word, this is like amazing. And uh, yeah. people, and then when on Bookshare, where people are like, oh my word, I love your dad's books and they've really helped me in like difficult time or they've changed, they've got me back into reading. It is quite surreal in that way, thinking, oh, that's Dad. And we're really proud of him. And uh, I think it makes it more a lot more enjoyable because, uh, as we said earlier, any questions I've got, I can just go and ask him straight away. Yeah, it's really nice. Like I said, I've become like friends with Christopher Rocchio. And it was really nice reading his most recent release, you know, having a straight line to ask him, hey, what did you mean by this? You know, that, yeah. that, that, that's yeah. really cool. That's about the only thing. You get the ends. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I always try, uh, from page one, I try and be critical. And then by page two, I'm like, this is amazing. And then yeah. I've completely forgotten to be critical. I mean, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's things sometimes I like, can you include this? You know, but dad's like, you're too Disney. Because I always, ah. <laughs> the yeah. I love the beginning of Malice so much when everyone's smiling because it gets to page like, you know, 550 in Malice and then no one smiles again. Dude, I started reading Bloodsworn and I was like, okay, this is, this is John. This is old vicious pin, as I call him here. He's going to take these characters away from you. Don't fall in love with them. Yeah. Can't help it. Um, <laughs> I mean, um, in uh, Ruin, I think, uh, no spoilers, but um, Ed was about halfway through two thirds of the first draft and he came out and he was like, this is awesome. I'm yeah. loving this. And he went away and uh, he was gone for a few hours. And uh, I remember we're all in the living room and he walks in. There's and pictures of me tear stains. <laughs> And Dad was like, oh, what did you think? And Ed was like, it's rubbish. There's, it there's, change. there's been two times in my life where I actually physically couldn't talk to Dad. And um, one of them was when I read The End of Ruin. Uh, and then the set, the other time was when I went to see King Kong in the cinema. And uh, Dad, like, all week was like, you're going to go see King Kong. It's be brilliant. I'll take you. This is Peter Jackson's one. Yeah, so I went yeah. to cinema. And obviously, you know, it gets to the end. Spoiler alert. Uh, King Kong is standing on top of the Empire State Building. These planes are, you know, flying towards him. And... Um, and I was like, yes, they're going to die. They're going to get it, aren't they? And then dad looked at me, was like, oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's not going to be happy. And then obviously the only person I could blame for taking me to see such a horrible, disgusting film was dad. So I literally, I cry. I love King Kong so much. I actually have a toy. Of, hang on. I mean, you actually didn't talk for days I have King that. Kong on my bookshelf. So I can't Every time you look at that, it reminds you of the pain that you're dead. He, a painful lesson he had to teach you, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think Ed actually, you didn't talk at all for a few days after that. No, I, I couldn't talk to him. No, I just cried about King Kong. See, for me, that moment was the ending of Empire Strikes Back. That was like my learning moment. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like okay, you know, the good guys don't always win, kind of thing. So it was very important for me. My kid was just like every other kid that age, full on in the MCU. It was very yeah. important for me that he experienced Infinity War the way <laughs> that it ended without having the immediate movie next to go to. Yeah. Happy ending. Yeah. You know? He was so mad. Like he was like, <laughs> "Who cares about the Avengers? They can't beat anybody anyway." He's like, "Oh shit!" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm coming." Okay, that that is some ending. Oh nice. my goodness! I just, I just wish they kept it like that. I, when, when, we yeah. the, when we were in the when we were in the 
cinema and we were just like what has just happened well was always our, our big gripe about the mcu nobody died right and then they actually had the balls to do it. it's like okay for you what two hours <laughs> you know so yeah. i mean it's one of those moments i think uh, people talk about nowadays like the moment of like darth vader finding out about his relationship with luke and uh I think that I think that Infinity War is going to be a bit like that in like 20, 30 years of like for that for that generation, people. absolutely. They have, that yeah. is for Star Wars, you know, and so. everyone will know it before they watch it in the yeah. next generation, which yeah. is a shame in a way, isn't it? But I feel like that's this generation's equivalent. I'm lucky, yeah, we're lucky we got to see that, yeah, before yeah, it got. I think so. Yeah. So are you guys? Do you guys do e-reader? Are you all strictly physical? I try. So, I try to. Re- I mean, I haven't. I haven't got a Kindle. I'll mm. read on my laptop sometimes. If it's like an early draft of Dad's books, or if I've got Net Galley, you know. Uh, yeah. But I, I find it so hard to read on a laptop. So but uh, I, I am. I am reading. So I've not got a Kindle either. But I use my laptop, and I'm reading uh, Jay City through that at the moment. Yeah, I find it because uh, I, you know, as a fantasy reader, I read these books that are, you know, just thick. They're really big, yeah. heavy books, and I, I found out that I like to read in bed a lot. And I will. Mm. I'm very much a type that okay, I got to make it to the end of the chapter before I fall asleep. I can't yeah. stop until yeah, the chapter. Yeah. And I would fall asleep in the book with smash me in the face. Right. <laughs> so I found out that a Kindle weighs, you know, like five ounces, you know. Hey, that's yeah. that hits you in the face. No big deal. That's that's yeah, fine. Yeah. No, I can take that. <laughs> so that, that was the yeah, first thing nice. It's pretty much yeah, my, my bedtime read now. Yeah. But if I got mm-hmm. the option, I like to read right here at my desk because it's at the, you know, it's a place where I can put the hardcover completely wide open on yeah. the desk. I ain't got to worry about the kids destroying it. Mm-hmm. I got perfect lighting in here, you know, so yeah. I know, yeah. like physical books. I mean, we've got goats now, so um, I'll go in the garden and read. But then the goats will just come over to you. They'll all stroll over, and then they'll start chewing the book. And it's like that, like serious panic, where it's like, well, hang on, what book is it? And then I see it's like William Silmarillion, and he will is going to kill me or something. <laughs> No, they haven't done that. Well. You never told me that. <laughs> but so yeah. now I got to try to do the thing where I get like a, so a little peek behind the curtain. Don't got to tell me anything about it. But does your dad have his idea for his next series after Bloodsworn? Does he have that planned yet? Has he made a decision to say that? Uh, yes no, no decision as yet, but there are a few He's got some balls ideas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's, always, he's always prepared with what yeah. he wants to do next. I think he'll probably talk with his agent, um, Julie Crisp, who's amazing, um, and then kind of run it by her and see see what um, yeah. what the next plan will be. Is he yeah. planning to stay fantasy? He's not going to go crazy, like do like a cop drama or something next, is he? <laughs> Not quite. Like, no, no, How no. did you know, Mike? No. <laughs> yeah. He's you told know, you already. I know. Yeah. I've I've seen some weird things. Like when Stephen King decided he wanted to do cop dramas, I was like, "What is going on?" You know. So yeah. Yeah, I've seen I've seen it happen before. You know, it is funny when Dad used to tell people um, who didn't read fantasy, he'd say, "I'm a fantasy writer." You know, and, and I think he told I can't remember who he told, but it was this kind of this middle aged lady, and then she goes, "Oh, I read a lot of fantasy," and he goes, "Oh, you know, what's your favorite fantasy author?" And then I think she said, I, I read um, Fifty Shades of Grey. And Dad was like, oh, not that kind of fantasy. I don't read that. And then, so that's quite funny. But no, I don't think he'll go to a different different genre at the moment. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. Archer, thank you. It's very early to be watching uh, you know, us talk about these things. But hopefully, you know, we're as good as wow. a cup of coffee. That's an intense time. That's yeah. dedication. We'll try to keep you awake. Yeah. I had some people like, uh, there was this one guy, Terry, one of my patrons, when he first joined uh patreon you know we get to have zoom calls with my patrons uh once a month and he's in australia and the first time i have one he's like he got got up at three in the morning to join that that zoom call and i was like wow yeah that's dedication right yeah, <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. i respect those people yeah. i because i mean look i have you know i think any anyone who really is a reader has kind of crazy hours sometimes because we will yeah. give them a good book and we'll say yeah. eh. I just go for go sleep for the night, you know. Yeah. We will do that sometimes, but even I'm like, okay, but once I'm out, I'm out. I'm not getting up at three a.m. to to join yeah. the party. I, <laughs> yeah. so. I watch a lot of um, UFC, so I'm yeah, mostly that's in in America. So I'll, I, I'm, what time I'm, does that come on there? Because it's it's like midnight here. So yeah, it's like, three a.m. here. So um, yeah, wow. mostly well, we've already got it in I'm London good. tonight. So lucky I don't have to. I love it when it's in England, so I, <laughs> I don't have to stay up too late. But um, yeah. Mind you, if I go to sleep first, I can't really get up. So, so y'all, y'all, y'all are UFC guys? Yeah, I mean, we, we did karate for quite a while. So, um, but I've always loved martial arts, and I, yeah, I like like watching UFC. You guys are big into soccer. Is that is that just like is that a big stereotype that, that everybody loves soccer in England? Or is that a big stereotype? Oh, we fall into it. It's pretty popular. <laughs> no, most people do, but yeah, yeah. But we love football. We'll say. Um, yeah. <laughs> I made a mistake one time. Okay, look, in Texas, American football is like. A religion it's yeah. big i mean there's people who like from the cradle to the grave that's everything to them is football yeah. so i had this t-shirt that said football not 
football, not F U T B O L with, with the state of Texas in it, just as a joke. And then I realized one day I wore it on camera for the, for all my weekly updates. And I was like, you idiot. You realize half of your audience is overseas. right? <laughs> so uh, I got some interesting comments in there, but I was, I, I think I, I let them, you know, understand that it was just yeah. a joke, just a joke shirt. And it's just a, a Texas thing. You know, you yeah, gotta, yeah. it's just so weird that, that soccer is so popular. Every other country. I know. Yeah. Except America. Yeah. And so lots of people, you know, when I was, when I was leaving secondary school, lots of people who wanted to be footballers, they would all go over to the U S yeah to go to these academies and you know and then they come back over when you know they're, they're decent footballers yeah i know but, quite a lot of people from my age that america is a lot of the best academy so it's, it's quite weird in that way isn't it do you uh, do you watch much soccer mike never uh, here's the thing about me about soccer guys is like americans aren't going to watch something that's two and a half hours and can possibly end in a tie they're <laughs> never going to do it however uh, i have gone to and it's and it's major league soccer which is nothing compared to what you guys get world cup and stuff like that it's yeah. nothing compared to that, but going to see stuff live, I think any sport live is amazing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do, I mean, will you watch the World Cup? Probably not. I mean, I watched it when, uh, when uh, God, what was it? I think might have been 2012 or 2016. I can't remember when USA got really, really far. And yeah. I, I did watch a little bit of it, but it does, yeah, what do they call those things? A bavuzula, those horns, yeah. Yeah. Drive me crazy, so I couldn't watch it much longer. So I would put it on mute, and I would like read while it was on, and just kind of look up if anything happened. So it's just it's never going to be a thing that I'm really really into. I'm just kind of the same with hockey, and I it's just I don't know. It's just yeah. I think if you watch this World Cup from the beginning, you'll you'll be invested, Mike. Give it a go. Yeah. I think well, USA are in the same group as are they in the same group as England? Yes, they are. Yeah, England and Wales. So I mean, we're a Welsh family, so we'll um. I always I think for me, American football, it's you know. Five months, once a week, and you're done. You know, yeah. it doesn't require a huge commitment. I mean, I, yeah. I I do love baseball, but I don't have time to watch 162 yeah. games anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So it's just that's the thing with when it comes with like kids and stuff like that. You don't have time for that anymore. But you know, I, soccer. I I think it's mm -hmm. great that everybody loves it, and I'm real big about not not taking a crap on things that people love. <laughs> but I will never do that. But I just I don't think it'll ever have mass appeal in America. Ever. Yeah, hmm. it's a shame. I mean, yeah, some. Just the way it is sometimes. What's your favorite sport? Is it is it baseball then? Uh, no, it's 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 always going to be football. I, I am I am yeah. in Texas. It's always going to be American <laughs> football. It, it is, but this is going to sound so Neanderthal. I'm sorry, guys, but they keep on limping it down with a lot of the rule changes, which I know is for safety reasons. They want these yeah. people to stop dying when they're you know 34 because they've got brain trauma. I get yeah. that, but they've 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 just they've made it so many things just penalized now that's almost like i'm just i'm watching the referees just make the rules and it's i don't know i don't know it, it's it's, it's kind of getting rough so you know, say, we, got a, we got a baseball team that's it's winning a lot so it's that that makes it you know sometimes where you kind of want to be like ah no i like baseball the best you know so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know you guys ever watch got any american sports over there nba nfl moe Nothing. No, no, uh, not, no really. not really. I mean, we'll watch boxing, but that's you know in America, that's that's as far as it goes, really. But um, yeah, yeah. not 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 too much else. We watch uh, tennis, US Open, more, yeah. yeah. So um, Philip will be happy. <laughs> do you play tennis or do you just watch? We we we're play not, a bit. Yeah. We're not very good, but uh, we do play. We we yeah we we what we lack in skill, we make up for it in enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. you, know what, you know what I wish I could play is golf. I feel like I have never played. Oh no! Because here's the thing, is guys, I will play miniature golf. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I ever do play real golf, my short game is going to be amazing. But I just don't think I can drive, <laughs> I just don't think I can drive a ball without throwing my back out. Yeah, yeah. I um, I find golf horrible to watch. Unfortunately, I mean it's, a, it's just a huge thing. I would love to love it, but um, mm. yeah, it's just not for me. I've tried to watch a few tournaments. Yeah, but, like, but it's like I enjoy playing uh, cricket. I'm not sure if it's big in America, but I don't enjoy watching it. So yeah. you, you get some sports like that. So I'm going to ask you guys about that war band video you guys had me make. Yeah. Uh, first, thank you. That was a really good idea. I, I liked it a lot. But uh, I, I just want to know, how are you guys going to beat my team that's got Conan and the Bloody Nine on it? Yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, when I saw Conan, oh, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I saw mean, Logan, I was like, oh, no. I mean, I, mean, I guess oh. your hope is that Conan and Logan try to establish dominance and one kills the yeah. other. Yeah. You know, that's the like, thing. We'll just back away. I think until when, that yeah, when the Bloody Nine comes out, I mean, Conan... He's gonna feel a little, you know, a, a bit of a sharp stick in, in his back, and he's gonna turn around, and the bloody nine's gonna be going for him. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, I would like to see that. 
I love Conan. That was I'm, a I'm really good one. I think you guys got a lot of people to do that yeah. too. So that was a that's a really good tag. We were really chuffed. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to do that for ages, didn't we? we yeah, were just yeah, waiting yeah. for the wait for the right time. But um, it was so much fun to make. It was hard. It was really hard to put a list mm. together. I mean, but... we actually thought of it before we started book chain because we were just yeah. talking about like who's who's the coolest, who'd be the champion. This is the thing with what? having you know, another pro of having an, your an author as your dad. So you can we'd write lists of our favorite characters and we'd be like, right, dad, who would win in a fight, Varadis yeah. or Connell? And then dad would give his answer and then we would both argue with him about why he's wrong. And then again, he would be like, yeah, I, I wrote the book. And we were yeah. like, like, fair enough. <laughs> fair um, enough, yeah. So we always right, like, we we'll, love, we'll give we love putting people against each other. So um, yeah, that was just... I mean, um, the answer is Macklin. Macklin would beat anybody. I mean, everybody... I, I agree, yeah. And, and I think I saw a comment earlier saying, um, who would you rather have on your side, Orca or Macklin? That's a hard one. If I was Orca's son, then Orca. <laughs> <laughs> That, that I'm gonna go really, really nerdy on you guys here. There was a show called Stargate. You guys ever hear of that? I've heard of it. Yeah, but... I've heard of it. Okay, well, they had a really, really just an awesome. It's actually the guy who voices Kratos on the God of War games, Christopher. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But he was a real popular character called Tilk, big dude. And then Jason Momoa's character on Stargate Atlantis, Ronan. These were jokes. So these characters are like badass, and they had a crossover episode. Yeah. Where these two just decide to spar, and people are like watching it, and you come back, and they're like, they've been fighting for four hours and neither one of them have got a hit on each other yet because they're just you know they're blocking and stuff so yeah that's what i imagine happens between orca and macklin they just they fight for like four hours neither one of them yeah. is going to give an inch but yeah nothing's ever going to happen to one of them just you know yeah just an endless then cycle. they just shake hands and they go to the pub yeah that makes much more sense yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys play elden ring because i get this question so much about elden ring See, we, we did we, we we want to love it we did try it together but it uh, is it too hard it's not well it was actually <laughs> yeah okay it's it a shame to say it because that's why i won't play it i was like dude i get so so i got so little yeah. time to play games i don't mm -hmm. want to spend it just sounding like yeah. an eight-year-old mad at a video game because i will just be pissed yeah that's that difficult but so, oh, until they oh, put a difficulty oh, setting on it no probably not yeah but i would think also what it is is that because we love reading and doing so much other stuff it's like when, when we play a game we want it to be really amazing to like mm -hmm. mess that time in yeah and so like uh we love god of war uh, and re uh, like Red Dead Redemption, and I think that I was expecting kind of graphics and something quite similar to that, but I but uh, that kind of wasn't yeah. delivered. It didn't feel very intuitive. But I mean, we we like we wanted to play together, um, but it took so long to actually get on the same, yeah, it was, it on was the same screen, bit of... the same bit that we were just like, I'm just going to give up. We we did we we did kill a few creatures, but it you know when it takes an hour to kill like a rabbit or something <laughs> i mean i hate warship down as much as the next person but it's going to take too too just too much time so um yeah unfortunately yeah, i like, I like a nice single player open world exploration yeah. you could die at any moment but not like you're going to die you know yeah, yeah. like you said like a, oh a rat jumped up and kicked my ass you know the stuff like that <laughs> well, I, I play like skyrim i probably sank a thousand hours into skyrim yeah. in my life oh, you know? oh mike no. i uh, i watched your video on to go read conan and then um and then i went and made conan on skyrim nice and um nice. and i just spent so that's the thing i could spend hundreds of hours doing that a, a game i played a million times yeah um but yeah elden ring i'm sorry it had to go. I mean, but... it was satisfying when we when I when I killed something in uh, Elden Ring. Oh yeah, but then but then you just go around the corner. And there's three more of them. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing uh, <laughs> what, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and you just get to do Viking raids. So I could just do that all day. Yeah. It's an open world of Viking raids. Yeah, I still haven't played that. I would, I, I, th I think my um my historical nerdiness would be triggered i think if i played something so sometimes i get upset with the last kingdom you know like they have swords in their back and i try and pull it in it's probably what you're going to be like watching the rings of power really yeah um, but see with that sort of stuff it doesn't really bother me yeah but, i mean I, that's why there, I like there are some things like that like i talk about with, with with christopher rocchio we were talking about uh vikings the show yeah. And he was saying, like, he couldn't watch it because of the historical inaccuracies. I was like, how do you know? This is all, like, you know, they don't have, like, a recorded history. He's like, no, I'm talking about, like, the clothing. They wouldn't wear that shit. Yeah, they dressed like they were in Sons of Anarchy. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, 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 about as quick as I'm on Sons of Anarchy, too. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that show is more about the performances, whereas Last Kingdom, I feel like, is a little more authentic, you know. So, yeah. I, I love both those shows, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed. I do enjoy them as well. I think that what, what was the season of the Last Kingdom that was just one of my favorite seasons ever. Season it might three. be season three. I think it was just so well done. 
Yeah, um, I, was, I, was, I, tell, I tell everybody as like they, they were saying like, ah, oh, it's shaky that first year. You know, they yeah. didn't have as big of a budget. It's like second year, much better. I was like season three. I said is on par with Game of Thrones. It really yeah. is. Oh, it's, so it's, every episode, Uhtred and Alfred in that season, it's just incredible how they didn't win every award. That's yeah. beyond. I hated awesome. characters. I love characters. I mean, Uhtred, Uhtred is the main character. I think the actor does an incredible job, doesn't he? Yeah. So I remember good. at first, like my wife was like, I just can't get used to his accent. It's so weird. But now I find her walking around the house being like, What do you think you are doing? <laughs> 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 I was like, yeah, it's addicting. It's addicting. There we go. Mike, yeah. you should do audiobooks, Mike, I reckon. Uh, I you know, I can't listen to him, but I always said I would love to work for Audible. They would set up a studio yeah. in my house, mm. you know, because I'm not I'm not moving to California <laughs> yeah. to record audiobooks, but you know, hey. Yeah, I think a lot of um narrators actually go to a studio to record it don't they yeah well, if we ever write a book mike we'll uh we'll hire you as our, mm. our narrator how's that sound I, I make sure that i pronounce kywin right there we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey cohen come on cohen. <laughs> yeah so yeah. There, there's lots of games that i would like to play like middle earth shadow of mordor that, that, oh, that, I, that did, I did love shadow of mordor yeah i there's lots of games i'd like to play it's just i i think when you are when i just kind of around 2015 or so where i just made the books my primary form of entertainment i always said i think i got enough time for three hobbies you know yeah there are books tv or video games and i was like i only have enough time to do two of those so books is always going to be there you know so if i'm watching a lot of tv or something like that i'm not playing any games and if i'm really into a new game i'm not watching any tv so yeah. i get yeah. so many people oh, you've got to watch this season of tv and stuff i'm like i'm sure it's mm. great yeah I mean, I might go through like a week or two of being addicted to like the Total War games. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're like historical strategy games and they are so addictive. Um, so I might go through like two weeks of like yeah. intense, like doing nothing else but that. But yeah, reading's the main thing. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. You are oh, so right. That Nimbus system on that Middle Earth game was so cool. I remember I, I was yeah. watching yeah. like a band of orcs go by from a distance and I shot an arrow and got one in the eye and they all started coming at me. So I ran away and I about like, probably 10 hours of gameplay later the same orc has like a metal eye patch he's like i haven't oh, forgotten what you did to my eye and i'm like holy hell that's amazing yeah i mean with a lot of these games uh, the main thing for me is immersion it's yeah. like yeah. shadow mortar doesn't necessarily stick to Lord of the rings law I don't, I, don't, no. I don't really care about that i was immersed it felt like lord of the rings it was awesome yeah yeah, so like, good. like give me an open world where I'm crawling around Middle Earth, and hey, I'm I'm interested. Now they got kind of crazy with like sexy human Shelob. I'm like, what the? What? <laughs> yeah, whatever. You you know, the, um, game's still entertaining. Yeah. Have you seen the new um Gollum game that's coming out? I saw like screenshots. Oh, I mean, no, I'm is, I'm it, really confused why <laughs> they hired of someone all... out of everyone who could do Gollum impressions. They hired someone who really can't. If you're choice like this, it's just all oh, it's just all oh, that. Yeah, I'm a bit confused why they pick Gollum for like an epic world yeah. kind of character to follow. I mean, I'm still going to try it because it might be really cool. <laughs> no, no, it it's like really Shadow cool. Mordor, but if you're Gollum. Yeah, everyone on the Discord talks about. Hey, I'm listening to the Andy Circus version of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and I yeah. joke. I've really heard he can nail the Gollum voice. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise me. Uh, you heard these graphic audio audiobooks? I hear this about this a lot. Apparently, they have like full cast actings and sound effects and all this oh, stuff. Nice. I, I yeah, just, out of curiosity, I looked them up because you know me, yeah. I, I can't focus on audiobooks. I thought, okay, if that's like a movie or something, cool, I could probably check that out, dude. They're like $150 a book. Wow, yeah. So, like, I mean, yeah. there's a few audiobooks that have got like three or four narrators, yeah. But yeah, n never heard of that. I mean, you better really love that book. Don't do that to a book. Don't <laughs> yeah, spend that right. on uh, I think the only one I is like I, I listen to like the sam when people talk about an audiobook a lot, I will go and listen to the samples just because yeah. you know, to see what they're talking about. Yeah. And I think the one for Doom was pretty cool because they have like a full cast for that. That's that's mm. really neat. They had like you know seven different actors. Yeah, yeah I think that. people who aren't into audiobook, um, I think that trying it with something that you've read before is pretty cool. Like uh, I think Philip Chase said he'd never um listened to audiobook, but he tried uh, Lord of the Rings, and uh, he, mm. he's loved that because he, he knows what they're about, and it's just yeah. getting that kind of different aspect on it. Philip's just on a different level when it me when it comes to reading. Is everybody's like, "Oh, Mike, you read so fast!" Like Philip read Malazan and all of the spinoff books in like a year. Philip's got me with yeah. you guys. Okay, so that that guy has. I mean, the discipline that takes us, and out. he's a busy guy as well. So yeah, he's, uh, yeah. yeah, So uh, and he doesn't just whiz through them as well. He's uh, he knows everything that happens in them as well. Mm. So whenever I recommend a book to Philip, here, here's the thing. I kind of feel like recommending like a Dresden file. I love Dresden files. I love it. I love it. Right. But I'm like with Philip, I'm like, I feel like I got to, 
I got to do something like I would be like smoking a pipe and, you know, wearing like a <laughs> jacket to recommend to fill up. You know, so. yeah. I love when you it. pretended to be Philip on your channel and you wore that the blazer. Yeah, that was fun. That was <laughs> Welcome to the best of fans. He got me back pretty good, but it's okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was, I was hoping he would do a thing where he would be like drinking coffee and wearing like a Grateful Dead t-shirt or something. That's what I was trying <laughs> to get to do. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like a clap. Back. Yeah. It got me so much worse than that. So. But we don't talk about that because I don't want people to look for that video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Philip this, isn't, awesome. this isn't live at all. It's fine. Yeah. With, with, with Philip, I always feel like I'm. I would say I always feel like I'm learning stuff when I talk to Philip, yeah. and uh, that's that's something I can't say. I don't know if you guys have ever uh, listened mm. to him and AP talk. Yeah, and whenever him and AP talk, I just feel like maybe I'm not smart enough to be in the room when that's happening, you know? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's how, but, but Philip never makes me, or AP, they never make you feel that way. So that's what no, I No, no, I mean, the, the way, like, with the chats we've had with Philip Chase, like, we've yeah. talked about, like, kind of, like, Beowulf, and he's, you know, everything about And then about he these. starts reading an uh, old Norse. And I know. You're like, when we reviewed, uh, when we reviewed Beowulf, he started off just speaking whatever. <laughs> it were all reading Beowulf, and I was just yeah. like, but it's always done in a way that just makes me want to kind of like dive into it and like makes me want to go back to the school. Like I want him as my teacher kind of thing. Mm. I remember when he reviewed uh, Shadow of the Gods. He got his review of Shadow of the Gods out before me. And yeah. he opens it by like speaking like Gaelic. And I was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> How can I compete with that? You know? So. Yeah. <laughs> Never make another review again. We all played to our yeah. strengths. But yeah, it is awesome. I mean, he's a, uh, he's a very cool guy. As yeah, well. he is. Yeah, awesome. AP as well. I love listening to both them chat. Uh, well, you guys got to you got to push you got to push the envelope. Say, hey, mm. I would like to come on the channel and talk to you guys. I don't think either yeah. one of them would say no. Yeah, I guess the thing I get is like people. I assume they don't ever ask me because they assume that like I'm too big and I'm like, guys, the channel isn't as big as you think it is. I was like, it's just, I'm not like some of those three five hundred thousand subscriber channels. I, I still got plenty of time. I mean, I, <laughs> well, I'm about to hit what seventy. I think I hit seventy four thousand today. Okay, mm -hmm. but here's the thing. Maybe a thousand of those people actually watch the channel. <laughs> you know? At least that's how I feel sometimes. So I, I, I never feel like I'm uh, above talking to anybody or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I hope that I still come off as approachable like that. Oh, yeah, you definitely, I think that's one of the like one of the aspects that people really like about the channel. Because as you said, you sit down, it's very conversational type of yeah. booktube, isn't it? I mean, that's what I wanted to go for when I did. I was like, I definitely don't want to come off as, you know, a know-it-all because I'm not. I mean, there's yeah. stuff that, I mean, I've spent so much time in the world of ice and fire and there's still stuff I get wrong sometimes, you know. Yeah. I've yeah. never claimed to be an expert or an authority or a scholar on these things. Like with me, I was just like, just want to create conversation. And I said, I want to do it in a way where it feels like you're in a coffee house or you're at the bar talking to your buddy. Uh, yeah, about, sure. you know, that's kind of always the approach I went for. So when the idea of these conversations came up, I was like, that's so much more fun than just talking to the camera. So yeah, I, I, I always, always appreciate conversations way more than just a, you know, a basic review or anything like that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I mean, th when we look back on our, you know, we look back on our year in, of booktube, the, those chats were kind of our favorite things to do. Yeah. You know? They're the most memorable as well. And they're the ones that, that we enjoyed the most. So um, yeah, yeah we're, we're very happy to be doing it again. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Took a lot to take the dive for the first time there. Cause we'd never done anything kind of live. Like uh, I know you have quite a, a podcasting background, don't you? Um, yeah, I broadcasted. Let's see if I started podcasting about yeah. sports uh, mm. because I thought that here in America, sports talk radio is a big deal. And I thought it was terrible. It was terrible. It just no one knew what they were talking about. It was always people from like New York and stuff. And I'm like, why do I got this guy from New York? Why don't I get somebody from Texas? You know, and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> so I started doing it on my own. And guys, if you think that like YouTube comments are bad, you have no idea what sports fans are like. And I was like, yeah, oh, I know. I mean, that's yeah. So yeah. then I started writing for this website uh, about media stuff. And that was actually how I got access to see, you know, Game of Thrones and stuff like that, you, you know, six months before it ever aired on HBO, things like that. So it was like something I started doing for like perks, but I liked writing about it, but not a great writer. So that was my problem. So I said, I'm going to make a podcast for this website. And they told me they didn't want me to do that. So I went off on my own and did that. So yeah. I did sports for about five years. I did uh, just uh, what we called it Geek Media Core for about three years. And then when I started doing this, this was kind of a side thing for that. Yeah. My podcast host, you know, he had a baby and stuff, was starting a family, and he just didn't have the time for it anymore. So I was like, okay, I'll just lean into this. And I never thought that it would uh, – I didn't know that there was so many people who like books. Yeah. You know, that was my thing is it just seemed like everyone I knew was very much, ah, mm -hmm. I'll just wait for the movie, those types. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Or what are you reading for? Not what am I yeah. reading, but what are you reading for? You know, that yeah. was always the kind of people. So that's why I, I did this. So I had no idea 
that this was really a big thing until I started mm. doing it. I'm just, yeah, I'm it's, glad. A great, yeah, yeah. it's a great, really great people. Same here, because yeah. I've got a few friends who read, but um, not maybe not the same stuff as I do. And it's just awesome to be like on a on a platform where you can find people reading the exact same things as you, you can recommend stuff to you that they think that you'll love. It's just awesome to be part of that. Yeah, we're part of some some niche hobbies, definitely. So yeah. it, it's so much fun to go and you know mm. talk to other people about things that we enjoy. You know, I'll I'll talk to people uh, about reenactment and you know historical fiction and all that kind of stuff. And it, it's just nice to see like minded people and and talk to you. You know, yeah. and obviously seeing you, Mike. You know, you love dad's books, and that was <laughs> our favorite. You know, as our first thing that we kind of experienced that we utterly loved, wasn't it? So um, yeah, it means it, yeah. it means a lot to us to talk to people like that as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you guys are. I'm glad you guys did it because, uh, you know, mm. I think showing that I, don't know, I would say that, you know, that BookTube is kind of a, a, a young person's game, it seems like, but I felt like they were all like talking about the same five or six series over and over again. Yeah. So I appreciate a channel like you guys showing that, hey, you know, you can be young and still read Beowulf and things like that. Something yeah. you know, people yeah. got to read in school and they were like, ah, you know, keep it away. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, like it, it, it's cool to read those things because they're, good they've been around yeah this long for a reason you know yeah. i feel like that's a, a good thing so anytime you can kind of pass it on to uh you know the younger generation i feel like that stuff's going to get lost if we don't pass it on yeah so like i mean clearly your dad's passed it to you guys and you guys yeah. are paying it yeah, yeah 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 i mean reading stuff outside your comfort zone does does wonders definitely and it's same as life as well doing things outside your comfort zone make you enjoy different things you know i never thought i would have been you know recording videos talking about books you know if i was a teenager yeah. 17 years old i'd be like no way would i be doing that but here i am and i absolutely love it it's like yeah yeah and then going from, continue and then going from uh doing recorded videos to then doing stuff live like recording mm. videos a bit of safety net isn't it okay i can edit this can change mm. stuff on it but uh yeah, yeah there's another thing that i wanted to do is uh, because i had that podcasting background i don't usually have a lot of dead space i don't say uh i don't say you know a lot yeah Things yeah. that I feel like a lot of people still struggle with. And so I would say I want to use as little cuts as possible because I would watch some of these these booktubers or YouTubers and they just it was like a cut every like six seconds. And I was like, that's just I, I don't know. That was just something I didn't want to go for. So that's why when people are like, Why do you why do you leave your sips of your coffee in on your video? And I'm like, Well, first I'm thirsty, and second, because I want to feel like a conversation. And if you were having yeah. a conversation in real life with a person be like, Oh, I can't take this sip because I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean, you're far more prepared than us. I mean, uh, I think we when we our did our first, first video, I mean, it's so I watched it recently. It's so so funny because oh. we've got that, like fit. We cut about fifty times. We're like, how do people actually say a sentence? Yeah. without mixing it. Yeah, up? yeah. yeah. I think that having that podcasting training helped me a lot with it uh, as well. So yeah. I mean, I don't expect everyone to be great at it. It's not, that's really not what I'm saying. I was just saying that hmm. that was something I wanted to stay away with or, yeah. or where I could tell that someone was reading off of a paper right in front of us. <laughs> yeah. like, I definitely don't want to do that. So yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, you go back to those earlier videos of mine. I hate them. I hate that people, <laughs> I hate that people still watch them, you know, because I was like, <laughs> it's not because, you know, my opinions have changed or anything. It's just that I don't want someone's first experience with the channel to be, you know, those early videos, you know, yeah. I wanted to see that, okay, things are much better now. You know, mm -hmm. I actually have an actual camera now, you know, and professional recording equipment. But yeah, yeah, it's also good to humbling to go back and see like, hey, you see, you, you always get better. So Yeah, it's so funny. I think a lot of people are like that. Like dad would say he doesn't want to read The Faith in the Fallen because he feels like he want, would want to change certain things. You know, um, the first thing that you release is is that, you know, you grow a lot from it, don't you, I guess? like. Yeah, I think Joe Abercrombie wrote a thing about going back and rereading the blade itself and all the stuff that you would that. do differently this time and whatever. And I was like, no, I love that stuff. Leave it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. When he read the blade itself, he was like, yeah, it's not much plot, but it's pretty funny. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of, <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny. I mean, a lot of people say blade itself how slow it is. I was like, I just love the character work. I just love spending time with them. Mm. Absolutely adored it. Yeah. 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 That. No, same. This is a good one here. Uh, with a dad like yours, you have any aspirations to write yourselves, or do you already? Definitely aspirations. Like, I mean, I mean, Ed made a joke saying if he ever gets published, he'll have um, in big writing, in small writing, Edward. Then he'll say John Gwynn. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Owen King did that. <laughs> Stephen <laughs> King and Owen King and yeah, Owen yeah. King Brook. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've um, I've, I, I well, yeah, I'd love to be an author. I've, I've written forty thousand words of uh of my own standalone. So um yeah, just gonna chip away at it this summer and if get a lot of words down. Yeah. I mean it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean it, it really makes us want to be writers, but uh 
it is easier said than done, isn't it? It really is. It's I mean, I've written so many different things that dad, dad's very kind. He'll go through it, you know, with me with a red pen. But yeah, basically, you read it. And have that, you know, that that kind of mentor in house has mm. got to be a yeah, yeah. Nice leg up. <laughs> for for me, I get that question so much. Do you ever have any interest in writing? I was like, yeah, guys, yeah. the reason I read is because I, I I I can't write. For, mm. <laughs> and I was like, and I would just so fall into that trope of, hmm, I really like the way that Frank did this in Dune. I'm going to write that in here. Okay, I really like this part in Star Wars. And I see that. Hey, yeah. Tolkien did this. That's cool. Yeah, that would just be a mashup of all my. Yeah, now, I know there are a lot of authors out there who've made a great great career out of doing that. I didn't mm. want to be that person. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, lots it, of good good authors. It's just plagiarists. So you just got to, you know, steal from the right places. I mean, look I at mean, George R. R. Martin, and the, his the whole Stark and, La and Lannister is the 15th century War of the Roses. So, War of the Roses. I but, mean, um, um, if you take it in the right way, and then just you know change it. There's the saying is yours. There's a saying is that if you steal from one source, you're a plagiarist. If you steal from loads, you're a genius or something, <laughs> or you're an author. Yeah. Um, I, the, other. the funny thing with dad is that uh, when we've got a bit more ser serious about trying to write things, we sat down and we're like, how do, how do you do it? But it just comes so naturally to him. He was like, yeah. oh, I just thought of my three, four events. Yeah, that it's so frustrating. And then I just write and I just see what comes out. He's such a good teacher. And then, yeah. you know, the, the answers you really want. He just goes, I just do it. And that, <laughs> that's even more annoying, to be honest. Um, oh, just do it? Yeah. 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 Like, how did you do this? How did you write this? And how did you plan all this together? And he's like, it, it just worked out. Like and then when he was editing it, he's like, oh, yeah. that could yeah. fit nicely there. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's jammy, but he's good. Right? <laughs> Yeah, it's good also with family is they got no problem being vicious either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trash, yeah. garbage. No, you guys take yeah, this yeah. out. Okay. He's, don't so do kind, this. he's so kind about it, though. He's like, oh, Ed, I really like what you're trying to do here, but we're just going to put our red line through it. And <laughs> then, <laughs> pages. And he goes, you know, a really nice word there. You use a really nice simile. That's lovely. Um, but yeah, that needs to go and that kind of thing. So, uh, well, it's nice to know that he's more gentle with you guys than he is with his characters. So. Exactly. Yeah. We could, yeah, we, we got to be, we could fare worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that, uh, we have talked for a good while here and I could probably talk longer, but you know, my kids are out there whining cause they haven't ate in two hours, you know, <laughs> you know, kids are just going to die and shrivel up. And just, yeah. you know, like I said, my wife loves to schedule her hair appointment, like right when I decided to do one of these conversations. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's a good coincidence. I yeah, really I appreciate that. you guys <laughs> taking the time out to do this. It was uh, something we've been trying wow. to do here for a while. And I'm glad it finally happened. If you guys ever want to resume those Joe Abercrombie talks that we had planned, uh, yeah. I think Philip and I would, I almost speak for Philip, but I think both of us, uh, would definitely love to do so in the future. I think we were going to do one on my channel, one on you guys, one on Phillips. Yeah. That was like the original plan. So if you guys yeah. ever want to resume that, just say the word and I am there. That'd we'll be awesome. We'll drop you an email soon and yeah, we'll get it get it booked in. And it's been an absolute pleasure being in this chat. I mean, had so much fun. I mean, just, just love yeah. talking about just books in general. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so much. likewise, man. Really so it. anytime that you guys want to hang, just uh, just 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 give me a shout. And guys, awesome. Go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you. We can you can find us on the Brothers Gwyn on YouTube. So yeah. uh yeah, that's us. All major. Any platforms. other socials that you care to talk about? Do you use them very much? Um, so I've I've really. got an Instagram and Twitter called the Wolf and Crow. So um, yeah, I don't I don't use too much of Twitter, but um, I'm I can't remember my Twitter handle. There you go. Then I think it's brother, brother Ed. Brother Ed. Yeah. William knows more about. Oh, that's why you still have your sanity because you're not using <laughs> that app too much. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's uh there's too much doom scrolling on Twitter, but uh, I, I use it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like sharing uh, uh, some pictures of uh, my favorite books on Instagram. That's yeah. probably the main thing I use. Yeah, definitely. And but share more pictures of the goat. I think uh, a lot of us yeah. would like <laughs> more of the goat. Does the goat have a name? Uh, so we've got two, Vito and Sonny, so from The Godfather. Oh, nice. Okay, so tell me when you're reading Jade City, you weren't just like, okay, this is okay. So no, Shay, honestly, is like, yeah. Shay is like Michael, okay, here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hilo is very much Sonny. I mean, you tell me yeah. you're not doing that the whole time. I'm doing that the whole time. I mean, time. yeah, I think I, I feel like I'm, I need to stop myself doing it so much. Like every new character I meet, I'm like, this is Which probably God like this character. character. Yeah, I'm going to be talking to her in September, Fonda Lee. Oh, wow, that's channel. awesome. And yeah. I... Pretty sure, just based off of her emails, we're going to talk about The Godfather for about an hour. Yeah. About it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm I need to read The Godfather as well. I am going to read. I'm going to read Jade Legacy, book three of that, and then I am going to read The Godfather because it's just yeah. something. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I can't believe oh. I've never actually read yeah. it. Honestly, do you prefer Godfather one or two, Mike? Man, it's tough. Gosh, I, know, I mean, I want to say hard. one because I like the whole like loss of innocence kind of thing yeah. with Michael and that story. And obviously you've got Sonny in there. Who's one of my favorite yeah. characters. Um, and and of Brando, movies. you know, so I bet, you know, yeah. but two is just full on where just Michael's just a monster, you know? So yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, I always say 
two because Robert De Niro, I think, just steals it for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Deep, so, see, I don't think there's a wrong answer there, really. It really just kind yeah. of depends on what mood I'm in. We yeah. just won't talk about three. I'm going to be I mean, honest. I can't watch one without watching the other. I've watched, watched yeah, one. Okay, let's go ahead and put in part two. Now, I, it's just a shame that it ended at part two, huh? That they never made any more. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they should do a three, really. But, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, maybe one day. All right, well, I'm going to feed the kids and go watch Godfather now. So awesome, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for the talk, and uh, we will talk again soon. Thanks, Mike. All the best. Take care. Truth and courage.